It's been 40 years since Kent State has won a MAC championship and gone to a bowl game. They are one win away tonight. Moments ago, we listened in to head coach Daryl Hazel. We got a championship three hours from now. Three. Everything you put into this thing, everything you sunk into this is three hours away. Let's go win it. A 12-win season of MAC championship and maybe a BCS berth on the line for Kent State. And for more on the Golden Flashes, we check in with Detroit's own <laughs> Jamel Hill. Thanks, Carter. Not only do we get a look at a Heisman Trophy candidate in Jordan Lynch for Northern Illinois, but we also get a look at one of the most electrifying players in the country in Kent State's Dree Archer. I asked Dree before the game, what kind of show do you plan to put on for us tonight? And he smiled, had a little twinkle in his eye, and he said, uh, we'll see. But I did talk to his coach, Daryl Hazel, about how they plan to use him, and they'll use him in the slot and that run back but one of the wrinkles we'll see he said is they will line Dre Archer up wide should be fun to see well Jamel he's pretty outstanding he reminds me a little bit of the Anthony Thomas Tavon Austin this is a guy who's been clocked at a 4 2 1 40 yard dash 4 2 1 40 yard dash which is why you will see Dre Archer in a variety of positions around the field tonight for Kent State. Interestingly enough, the Golden Flashes won the toss and deferred. Two ranked teams for the MAC championship hoping to bust the BCS in 2012. Freddie Cortez kickoff into the end zone and it'll be Northern Illinois football from the 25. So we see Jordan Lynch, the MAC player of the year in his first year as the Northern Illinois quarterback. And he's a Husky because this is the only program who gave him the chance to play quarterback. Third in the nation in total offense. And we should see a lot of Jordan Lynch tonight. Can you imagine his emotions? This is a guy, this is his third trip to this game. First as the starter and you know, they've got a Heisman campaign going on for him. So there's a lot at stake for him, a lot for him to control and not have his emotions hijacked in this ballgame. Of course, Jordan Lynch on first down. Jordan Lynch, the Heisman Trophy candidate. Where did that come from? The school's PR department? No, from the head coach, yeah. Dave Doran, who said, I'm the one who saw Jordan Lynch as one of the best players in college football and thought he deserved some more recognition. Yeah, last couple years he was behind Chandler Harnish, who was a great, great player, great quarterback at Northern Illinois. Lynch pumps, scrambles away, and has to dump it to the sidelines, incomplete. Third down coming. Luke Batten, the middle linebacker, brought the pressure. And, and this offense runs through Lynch. I mean, he's the rushing attack. You're talking about a guy who's carried the football 235 times this season, and he is the guy that throws it. There's no question about it. He's the focal point of the offense. He is right behind Johnny Manziel as number three in the nation in total offense. Normally, their passing attack consists of quick quick passes three step get it out and the occasional deep ball five wide on third and six fling it complete to Lewis who can't spin away from the golden flash defense in northern Illinois goes three and out from the Huskies playing in their third straight MAC championship. They won it last year. Their first MAC title in 28 years. Kent State hasn't won a championship in 40 years. Bad kick from near, but it takes a good roll for Northern Illinois all the way down inside the 20 yard line. So we see the Kent State Golden Flash offense. Kent State 11-1, 8-0 in the MAC. Good roll there for a 55-yard punt. Kent State quarterback by Spencer Keith, the senior from Little Rock, Arkansas. Now the Golden Flash's career leader in passing yards, who could be off to medical school this time next year. Pre-med biology major from Little Rock. 
He's become a star at Kent State despite some limitations that he and everybody else acknowledge. Yeah, I and mean, he doesn't have the biggest arm. He's got an average arm, but he's very good at throwing on the move, particularly to his right. They use him in the rushing attack, but not that much. They really focus on Dre Archer. He's at the top of the screen. And on the first play, into the hands of Dre Archer to the 23. The diminutive junior from Florida. Well, th this offense has nothing without him. He is the big play, the explosive guy out there for them. I mean, they put him in the backfield. They put him in the slot. They put him out wide. He's a matchup problem, but he is the guy that delivers the big play. Seven-yard reception, so... Now it's Archer in the slot, in motion. Trayon Durham, the other 1,000-yard rusher in the backfield. Durham takes it, and he is stood up on second and three. Victor Jacques leads the charge along with the ball. Jefferson, chance to look at impact players for the Golden Clashes. Yeah, well, it starts with Archer. We talked about him. He's got a running mate in the back of Durham. He's 250 pounds at about 5'11". Knicks and Wallet are active on that defense there. They lead a very aggressive defense that has 35 mm. takeaways this season. Tops. Mm. Tops in the country. They took seven away from Rutgers and their win over the Scarlet Knights. Kent State faces third and three. Archer's in the slot at the top. Keith floats it incomplete, and the Golden Flashes go three and out. Alan Baxter gets the pressure that time. Both offenses three and out. Yeah, and, and Baxter, that's a, a sign. This defense has two great pass rushing defensive ends, and if you can't handle them, you can't throw the football. Anthony Melchiori will punt to Angelo Sebastiano. Here they got it. Sebastiano from the 21. Gets at least 10 on the return, but there's a flag coming down on the return for Northern Illinois. After a 56-yard punt. Check the flag. Looks like they got a block in the back. The referee's Don Willard. During the return, the illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 29, 10-yard penalty. First down, timeout. Northern Illinois and Kent State Marathon MAC Championship. Jordan Lynch and the Huskies get the football again when we come back. Uncharted territory for Kent State football. Not only the Marathon MAC championship, but the number 17 next to their name. They haven't been to a bowl game in 40 years, Rod. They got a chance to go to a BCS game, potentially. Big for both of these teams, you know. They have no idea. They've not been under this kind of pressure before. BCS game hanging in the balance, possibly. I want to get your thoughts on Daryl Hazel's uh, speech here in a moment. Tommy Lee Lewis on the fly sweep for about five. What'd you think of uh, Coach Hazel's pregame speech? I thought it was fine. You know, I mean, he's got a team that hasn't been here before. He's He's been through some of this stuff when he was at Ohio State as an assistant coach. He knows his team will be fired up and emotional. You really have to harness that early on. Says the talk of the BCS, not one word with his team. Lynch completes for the first time to Martell Moore, the leading receiver for the Huskies. Yeah, he doesn't have to tell his team. <laughs> Everybody else is. They know. Yeah. Family, friends, newspapers, they all know. So the first first down of the game comes from Northern Illinois. They try quick tempo. That's an incomplete forward pass intended for Tommy Lee Lewis from Jordan Lynch. Well, you know how this offense works. It's throw the ball wide, quick screens, quick passes, make you defend the field, soften you up, and then pound you with Lynch at running back slash quarterback. So make you spread out to yep. defend those quick guys and let Lynch take it up the middle. Yeah, make, make you put seven guys near the line of scrimmage, seven in the box, and then they'll run it at you. It's been effective. They're averaging 40 points a game. Lynch is chased on second and 10, and he will take a loss. C.J. Malaulu eventually gets to him. Devontae Strickland 
first to apply the pressure. Yeah, and the defensive game plan is to make sure they take away the inside running lanes and force Jordan Lynch to go outside and force him to throw the football. What you don't want him to do is to get behind those guards and just run downhill at you. Third and 12, and Kent State loves to force teams in the third long and try and get a takeaway. Yeah, they're really good at that. Lynch incomplete. Martell Moore coming out of his break. Just a little off target. They get a first down, but end up hunting anyway. Out of sync, wouldn't you say? You saw that between Lynch and Moore. Moore was coming out of his break there. I don't know where the football was. Well, and this defense, it's really good in the front seven. I mean, they, they can take away the run from you. They've had trouble on the back end giving up touchdown passes and, and a lot of yards through the air, but they're good in their, in their front seven. Ryan Near will punt. Eric Adeyemi, fair catch at the 26. Told you a couple times, it's been 40 years since Kent State has been to a bowl game. The folks around can't know this team very well. 1972, a legendary football uh, team. Don James, the college of a football heck of a coach. Hall of Fame, won a championship in Washington. Jack Lambert, Gary Pinkle, also on that 1972 team. And Lambert, Nick Pittsburgh Saban. Steelers, yeah. Nick Saban. He learned everything about coaching, he says, from Don James. That was that was the beginning of it. And that was an important team. I had a good conversation with Gary Pinkle a few years ago about what that 72 team meant for Kent State after uh, the tragic killings on campus the university needed a boost and that 72 team certainly gave it to them 40 years later they're trying to get back to a bowl game before 1972 I think we're gonna do uh, yeah <laughs> oh. coach Holtz 1957 a member of the Golden Flashes 52 linebacker eyes that was kind of fun earlier this year when Dre Archer went for 241 versus Bowling Green and on college football final, Kent State alum Lou Holtz got to give a helmet sticker yeah. to Dree Archer. Archer's lined up in the slot, bottom of the formation. Spencer Keith heaving down the seam for Archer, who's got it. And the first big play of the night from Dree Archer. Oh, did you see that flash going by? That was Archer. A golden flash. Oh, man. They had him in the slot. Nobody over him. So he had a lot of running room. Find, found that soft spot. He actually dropped that ball. He actually dropped it. Good catch by the officials. They brought it back. So that is incomplete. Well, he's wide open with that. Mm. So wipe out the first big play for Archer. Incomplete. Back to third and 11. Here comes that pass rush. If you don't take care of those ends, Baxter and Progar, you're in trouble. Keith is chased, throws incomplete. So it's another three and out for Kent State. First two possessions, three and out, three and out. Yeah. Keith to the incompletion from Archer. Keith has a lot of pressure on him tonight. He, he's going to have to throw the ball more than he probably has in any other ball game, and he's probably going to have to run it some. I mean, his defense is going to try its best to take away Archer and put more pressure on that man right there. They did it on that third and 11. It was Joe Windsor who broke through to get the pressure on Keith. Golden flashes punt again. Donkey Orr, the freshman punter. These are two of the highest scoring teams in college football. And yet, a competition between the punters in the first quarter so far. Fumble! Kent State ball at the Northern Illinois 22. That is takeaway number 36 on the season. They were plus 20 coming into this ball game. Now they're plus 21. And this is just effort to get the ball out. Look at that. Polk gets in there and strips it out and recovers it. Darius Polk, what a play. Th that's just being conscious of trying to create turnovers. That's number one for Kent State, but it's Darius Polk. Dre Archer also wears number one. And it's Dre Archer in motion on first down. 
Uh, this is a new look. They don't do this very often. Two backs in the backfield. Archer and Durham, both 1,000 rushing yards. They draw the defense in, try to hit for the touchdown, incomplete, intended for Adiemi. He had him. He was behind the corner and in front of the safety. And we talked about the pressure that Keith is under tonight. I mean, he's, he's got to come up with those. He's got to make those throws to open other things off, uh, up for them. The pressure is there. They're going to do their best to limit Archer and force Keith to beat them. Only one for five to start. Archer's at the top. Durham to make it third down from right around the 16. Ken Bishop on the stop. Sixty-one percent, roughly, touchdowns on possessions. First trip inside the red zone for either team. You know the standard. Got to be around 75, 80 percent. They're not there, but they, this is a critical third down, a chance to strike first. Archer on the reverse, running away from the Huskies and into the end zone. Touchdown, Kent State. Like the Golden Flashes have done all season, they get a takeaway. Dre Archer turns it into points. Yeah, and, and they might have gotten away with one. I mean, if I'm Northern Illinois, I'm a little bit upset here. I think maybe there was a missed block in the back. Right, right there with Bass. That's Bass in position. He gets shoved from behind, unable to make the tackle. Freddie Cortez gets the PAT. Kent State with a number 17 next to its name, hoping to get to that magical 16 spot of the BCS. Gold flashes strike first. The 2012 Marathon Mac Football Championship, brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit, and Hankook Tires, be one with it. Hankook Tires. Well, the formula for Kent State here in the Marathon MAC Championship has been like it has been all year. Get them to 11 wins. It's been takeaways into touchdowns. And the two number ones, Darius Polk got the takeaway on the punt. And then Dree Archer gets into the end zone to make it 7 0 Kent State. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, our Friday night crew from Ford Field in Detroit. Freddie Cortez. Oh. Sebastiano, how about that? He brought it out against advice. Sebastiano across the 30. Let's go back to the touchdown. F to the flag. Against Northern Illinois. Let's go back to the touchdown. Yeah, now we showed you the block in the back, but I want you to see some smart game planning by this offense. Watch Baxter here. They know that he is an aggressive pass rusher. So they take advantage of this on a third down, bring the reverse, stop it right there. Look at it, way up the field. Now look at all the area out there. Instead of having, having people up there cutting off that angle, he's way inside, and now his linebacker has to come up and try and help. He gets blocked in the back. So good game planning to take advantage of that aggressive defensive end play. Rod, who's got the contain there? Who's got the contain? Well, there's your defensive end rushing yeah. the quarterback, going way, way inside. And there he goes. Bye-bye. So Northern Illinois been a slow start for the Huskies. Three and out, a punt, and then they fumble the punt to give it right back to Kent State. Jordan Lynch, nothing doing. Yeah, they're, they're just out of sync. Did, did you see all that? Folks bumping into each other, running into each other when the guard tries to pull? Wow. Jordan settle down. To stop. That's what Dorn is thinking. Let's just settle down and be ourselves. That's what he's hoping and trying to get across to his guys. Lynch, the junior from Chicago, incomplete again. Just as you said, Rod, out of sync. Well, a lot of different things going on. I mean, you're in this dome. You got a Heisman Trophy candidate. You got a BCS championship. 
a bow appearance on the line. All those things, and you get off to a rough start. I want to ask you at some point about whether Northern Illinois has a chance of getting to 16 from 21. We'll discuss. Northern Illinois, 0 for 2 on third downs to start. Lynch has time, completes first down to the 25. That was gunned. Man. Wells makes the grab. Jamison Wells batting on the stop. Yeah, Wells had no choice. It was catch it or be knocked over by this ball. Watch this bullet. <laughs> That's a good throw. Quickly to the line on first and 10. Swing it outside. Akeem Daniels, the junior, who will be uh, lined up all over the field for the Huskies. Now, this offense works best when you've got Lynch running the ball inside, and then Martell Moore is catching the ball outside and getting yards after catch. Lynch pulls it. It's three, so third and seven coming. So Northern Illinois is used to racking up a lot of impressive numbers this year. Yeah, look at those points. Look at the rank of all these things. Rushing offense, ninth in the country, 245 a game. They're great on third down. Except for tonight, they haven't been great yet on third down. Just one for three. The Huskies have not lost since the opening weekend when Iowa beat them by a point at Soldier Field. 11 straight wins for Northern Illinois. Lynch, pressure, throws incomplete on third and six. It's Darius Polk coming on the corner blitz who got to Lynch. There is a flag down. Yeah, they've got him for grounding, and they didn't pick up Polk because he disguised the blitz so perfectly. Intentional grounding. Offense, number six. Finalized by the foul. Lost it down, fourth down. Yeah, the blitz comes late. Look at Polk. He comes a long way. Lynch has no idea. They didn't check for him. They didn't expect it. And clearly grounding here. He's in the grass there and throwing the football away. Nobody over there. So the Huskies try and regroup. Well, you know, this happened to them last year in this game. They were down big. Northern Illinois trailed Ohio last year 20 to nothing at the half and then came back and won it 23 to 20. Throws in reverse. What? What is... <laughs> what's going on? Why are you trying to get on that football? Oh, Italiano ends up getting on top of it. Throws a little you know bit for his teammates. Freshman. Yeah. <laughs> that 19 on the punt. Oh. Sunday night, we unveil the matchups to all the BCS Bowls. It's the Discover Card BCS Selection Show, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN on Sunday. And the big question for the Golden State Flash is, will they be selected to a BCS Bowl? Number 16 in the BCS, that's the magic number. They're at 17 now. You know, it is a fair question to ask whether either one of these teams are BCS worthy. Nobody there for Keats play fake, so he will take the sack all the way back at the 42. He was he was down. Keith was down. So 16 is the key number. How does Kent State get there? Well, Kent State would need a win tonight. They'd need Texas to lose. They'd have to have the voters like them more than Boise State and Michigan and move them up. And that's where it starts to get murky, because when you start looking at the losses, each team had one loss. The Kentucky loss by Kent State is really ugly. 47 to 14. So Kentucky won, won two games yeah. this year, and one of them was a blowout yeah. win over Kent State. Keith, screen complete. That's Humphrey rolling for a first down to the 21. Demetrius Stone finally brings him down. So, you know, you look at it, Northern Illinois is a team who's won 11 straight games. Their only loss is by a point to Iowa first weekend, and yet it's Kent State who was blown out by Kentucky yeah. who has the higher rank. But still, the, the Iowa loss is not a great loss. I mean, we're used to seeing a BCS Buster be an undefeated team. You know, a Boise State, a Utah, a Hawaii, undefeated, rolling through, and, and having a compelling story. But by virtue of the rule that allows one in this year, when you have an, a big six conference team like Louisville winning their conference and being unranked, that opens the door. This is Durham. 
with just a yard or two can Bishop on the stop. So as we talk about getting to 16, of course the BCS is always going to come with a lot of rules, but you have to finish in the top 16, finish ahead of a champion from an AQ conference. That's clearly done with yeah. Big East champion Louisville not even ranked. Yeah, yeah. And then have to finish ahead of Boise State. Well, Kent State, clearly, if they win tonight, they'll be way ahead of Boise State. And presumably, if uh, Northern Illinois wins tonight, they'll get a boost and likely will jump Boise State. I don't know if they'll get to 16, but that's their hope. Dree Archer is going to toss back. Humphrey looks to throw. He's going to heave it to the quarterback. Keith, it's incomplete at the goal line. So trying the toss, it was actually Matt Hurdle, senior wide receiver, trying to throw it back to the quarterback, Keith. And Jamal Bath did a great, great job covering that. He was not confused at all. He took Keith the moment he came out of the backfield. Now, third down. You got a horrible punt that set you up. You got a chance to put points on the board against the defending champ. You, you got to take advantage of this. Kent State just one of three on third down so far. Spencer Keith shovel. That's incomplete. That's a shovel pass. Incomplete. Intended for Archer. So fourth and nine. Almost a handoff. Yep. But it is an incompletion. So even though Bishop gets on top, fourth down and nine coming, which means field goal attempt coming from Freddie Cortez. Kent State's all-time leading scorer passing Josh Cribbs. He has a big leg. This one for 37. Freddie Cortez, 37-yard field goal is good. And Kent State off to a 10-0 start on Northern Illinois, hoping for their first bowl trip since 1972. Celebrating its eighth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship monies. Kent State gets a 37-yard field goal from Freddie Cortez to make it 10-0 on Northern Illinois, the Marathon MAC Championship, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Lewis will eventually take an eight, put it at the 25. We check in with Chris Carter. All right, Carter, the Sports Center right now brought to you by Marmot. The Spurs have been fined $250,000 by the NBA for sending Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili home instead of playing them against the Heat last night so they could rest for the Spurs' home game Saturday against the Grizz. And Big Ben is out Sunday when the Steelers face the Ravens. Pittsburgh 0-6 against Baltimore without Roethlisberger in the lineup. Carter? Uh, here in Detroit, it's big Jordan Lynch back out on the field for Northern Illinois. The numbers and everything else has been impressive about Lynch and the Husky offense, but not so far tonight. Rolling again on first and ten, just nothing there for Lynch, so he throws it incomplete. Well, that is their sixth first down play. Carter, they have a total of 11 yards mm. on six first down plays. And look at Lynch, who averages 363. That's right behind... Johnny Manziel, Nick Florence, by the way, of Baylor is number yeah. one. Tonight, 17 yards of total offense well, for I, Lynch and the Huskies. I'm surprised how unnerved they've been early on. Considering it's their third straight year in this game, third down coming, we check in with Jamel Hill. It's interesting to see that Northern Illinois is struggling because when I talked to Jordan Lynch, he thought one of the things working in their favor is the fact that they had played in this game several times. He said, we know this facility well. We know what to expect. We know everything about it. We feel good here. So this is a, an interesting outcome given his comments. Yeah, yeah, give credit to this defense, but the things like running into each other and misreading each other in routes, that, that's not the defense. Lynch complete. 
for a first down across the 37. He finds Jamison Wells again for as the second third down conversion. Two years ago, Northern Illinois was here where their head coach was Jerry Kill. Miami of Ohio stormed back to win that game. Then last year, they won in come behind fashion over Ohio. Lynch trying to get rolling in the ground game. Gets about nine there before Wallet brings it down. Yeah, there you saw the great vision. That play was designed to go to the left. Nothing there. Roosevelt Knicks ate up everything on that right side, and Lynch saw it and found the hole back to the right side. Lynch keeps it after faking to Daniels. You hear the Kent State defense call out quarterback, quarterback, yeah. but they can't get Lynch for the first down. Yeah, yeah, they, they have the alert. I mean, everybody's focused on number six in white. That's Jake Dooley who's coming off the field for Kent State. This front seven for Kent State, very experienced, very tough against the run. Fly sweep. Bobbled but corralled by Deron Brown. It goes for 10 plus. And the Huskies are starting to get it rolling. A couple of plays to the outside, a run to the inside. That's the way they like to roll. They like to get you going one way and then punch you in the mouth. Jordan Lynch being the punch. <laughs> And there he is, but he takes a punch this time. That's Zach Hitchens who's into the game because the injury from Jake Dooley stayed home and got Lynch. Northern Illinois has crossed into Kent State territory for the first time tonight. Screen. Complete for a minimal gain to Perez Ashford. Wrestled down by Roosevelt Nix into the game along with Malaulu. Well, clearly the best drive for Northern Illinois. Now you've got a third down and long. Maybe you're thinking two plays if you can't pick this up. You're, you're in that no man's land where fourth down is too long for a field goal. On third and seven, complete to the outside, but well short of the first down. It's Akeem Daniels, who's tackled there by Polk. And looks like Lynch and the offense are gonna come out, and Matthew Sims and the kicking unit comes on for Northern Illinois. Yeah, they, they got enough on that play to make them feel comfortable. This is gonna be about a 46, 47 yarder. Matthew Sims, who had a game-winning 33 yarder in last year's MAC championship game. This one from 47 to put Northern Illinois on the board. A fake, but first. Prior to the snap, first charge, timeout of the half, Northern Illinois, 30 seconds in length. Timeout, Northern Illinois, Wait prior to the fake. <laughs> you, you called the fake. Northern Illinois had the fake on and yet takes a timeout to negate what looked like a successful fake. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah they, they're probably not too happy about that one. That one was going to turn over as a first down for them. So, number 17, Kent State, a 10-0 lead on number 21, Northern Illinois. We talked about how that magic number of the BCS is 16. Rod, regardless of what happens in this game, the pollsters are going to have to yeah. move someone to 16 if they want either Kent State or Northern Illinois less of a chance to get there. But it's still going to have to come from the pollsters. Well, and that's the issue when you start looking at the one loss that each of these teams you know, has on their record. You look at the, the loss to Kentucky by Kent State, and that's going to make some people pause for a moment who maybe didn't look so closely when they were voting before. Now, here's, here's the fourth down going for it. Lynch back on the field for fourth and three. I thought they would do this a couple plays ago. I thought it made sense for them to have two plays in mind. Instead of fake field goal, it looked like it was going to work, but a timeout. And now Lynch and the Huskies back out there. Yeah. 
scrambling for a first down inside the 20. Inside the 15, Jordan Lynch. Man, is he a bull. See the way he finished that run? But, you know, I get it now. I mean, if you are going to go for it, why run a fake when you have Jordan Lynch? I mean, why take the ball out of his hands? It, it's, it's like Colin Clyde, as you yeah. said. If you think you're going to go for it on fourth down and you're good enough to do it, why would you take the ball away from the guy that you call a Heisman Trophy candidate? 11th play of the drive, and Lynch is going to take it himself again on first down inside the 10. Sidney Salter on the stop. Lynch, the junior first year starter, taking over for Chandler Harnish. You know, he's about six feet tall. He's about 220 pounds or so. He's a, he's a powerful guy. So he's not 6'5", 6 6'4", 6 6 like Tebow and Colin Klein, but he is a, as rugged a runner as they are. Lynch again, second and six. Drop for a loss by Matt. Dellinger got him in the right form too, down around the ankles. You know, when you attack him around the thighs or around the shoulders, he is too strong and powerful. So third and seven on the best drive of the night for Northern Illinois. Jordan Lynch throwing to the back of the end zone too high for Martell Moore. Fourth and seven for the Huskies. Kicking unit back out there. They had more. More was open. I mean, he's missed him a few times tonight. So the Huskies take it 13 plays, 65 yards, but have to settle for a field goal attempt. And here's Matthew Sims. Doubt they'll try the fake here. <laughs> Twenty seven yard of the junior from Hannibal, Missouri. Matthew Sims, twenty seven yarder, sneaks in there. He missed a twenty eight yarder in the last game versus Eastern Michigan in the snow. Manages to sneak in that twenty seven yarder. Northern Illinois is on the board. Proud to celebrate Jimmy V week here on the ESPN networks to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Log on to JimmyV.org. Or call 1 800 4 Jimmy B. 100% of donations awarded to cancer research. And this really hits home for the Northern Illinois football family because uh, their offensive coordinator at the beginning of the year, Mike Dunbar, veteran signal caller, had to step down from the team uh, to fight cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this disease touches everybody. I don't know anyone who hasn't been touched by it in some way, shape, or form. And it's so easy throughout Jimmy V Week, Jimmy V to auto work, 1-800-4-Jimmy-V to donate. Always proud when Jimmy V comes, Jimmy V Week comes around and have that opportunity. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill from Ford Field in Detroit, the Marathon MAC Championship. Going to go out of bounds, kicking away from Dre Archer. A big task for Tyler Weedle tonight. Pressure on him. Dre Archer back there to try and place it. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. As we talk about Jimmy V Week, some of the uh, troubling facts about this disease more than. Cancer will strike one out of every two men, one out of every three women in the United States, more than 13.7 million, million cancer survivors. Uh, as I said, I don't know anyone who hasn't been affected through family, friends, or, or in some way, shape, or form. JimmyV.org, 1-800-4-JimmyV to donate. Kent State football waning seconds of the first quarter. Rayon Durham, the sophomore from Cincinnati to near the 40-yard line. Kent State trying to win a championship for the first time in 40 years, dreaming of the BCS. A touchdown lead after the first quarter.
the Marathon Mac Championship from Ford Field in Detroit, just blocks away from one of the great wing spots in Detroit, the Sweetwater Tavern. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, and Detroit's own Jamel Hill. A Mac Championship and a potential BCS spot on the line, especially for Kent State, number 17. 16 is the magic number. Dree Archer on second and six. Huskies are ready, it's third down. That's pretty easy to figure out how to handle him when he's in the backfield. If he's gonna get a handoff, gotta go tackle him. I mean, you got seven or eight guys in the box near the line of scrimmage to handle him. It's when he's in the slot that he puts a lot of pressure on Northern Illinois, and they have to figure out how to defend him. Do you put a guy over him? Do you double him? Archer's in the backfield yeah, here for third and four. Archer's going to get it and wrestle down in the backfield for a loss. Ken Bishop drops Archer to force fourth down. Great job by Bishop. He was not fooled or influenced by the counteraction that goes to the left. Watch him come back inside, comes off his block. A good tackle. Right in the middle of your screen there, he disengages from the block of the center. He gets involved. It's having your eyes in the right place. Got the hands up there around the top of the jersey, but brought Archer down. Melchiori, good punt. Sebastiano from the 10. Room to run. Back to the 41. Angelo Sebastiano brought down by Urgevet. Chance to look at our Friday focus from Atlanta, site of the SEC championship. Game day is there, ready for Alabama and Georgia. A little production meeting, getting it going there, Sam. Cubs. Huh. Huh, okay. All right. Kirby. <laughs> Uh, coach relax on day before and Fowler and Desmond by the way Rod it, it is it is uh, improbable but it's possible Lynch throwing caught at the 35 Brown makes the grab Lynch and the Huskies finding their rhythm that is their best first down play of the night and now they hurry up a little tempo Goes for 25 from Jordan Lynch to Deron Brown. Complete again. Perez Ashford dropped by Norman Wolf. Switching it up a little bit. Starting out throwing the ball and throwing it down the field because the rushing attack has largely been taken away. A lot of guys near the line of scrimmage to take away the rushing attack with Jordan Lynch. Akeem Daniels takes it on second and five. Turns the corner, first down, keeps it rolling. We'll see where he stepped out, right around the 15. Holt forces him out. A much more confident, settled drive by Northern Illinois this time than the entire first quarter. At 25 on the big play to Brown, and just three plays, 44 yards. A field goal last time Northern Illinois got in the Kent State red zone. Jordan Lynch trying to get him in the end zone. Nothing doing there for Lynch. Yelling her on the stop. Well, one of the tendencies that you pick up on watching tape on Northern Illinois is that when they have two backs in the backfield, you know, even if they motion out of it, they like to run option, the zone read. Obviously, that's something that Kent State said, oh, boy, look at that, two guys back there. Hmm. Quarterback wants to run the ball here. Now pistol formation, changing things up. Lynch rolling. Back missed the block, didn't he? So yep. nothing doing there for Lynch. Third down coming. Well, you have less room down here. And surprisingly, the Kent State defense has done a good job of taking Lynch away down here. Now, they're pretty good in the red zone. But to take the quarterback away down here is really fantastic. 
And that's what they need to do here one more time. Empty backfield on third and nine. They've really spread them out. Martell Moore, who has 11 touchdowns on the year, is number one for Northern Illinois. He's at the bottom of the formation. You look inside, you got four linemen, five blockers. Lynch heaves to Martell Moore for the touchdown. And Lynch just kept buying time. Just kept fading back a little bit more, a little bit more, until Moore could come open for him. I mean, watch Moore get behind the picket fence. He's behind the linebackers, away from the safety, away from the corner. Got behind that ticket fence and just waited for the ball. A 10-0 start for Kent State, but Northern Illinois. Matthew Sims' PAT means 10 straight for Northern Illinois. Like the fight song says, come on, you Huskies, and make a score or two. You're Northern Huskies, the team to pull us through. You know, I was going to say earlier, with that SEC championship game, there is a, a possibility, I'm not saying a probability, if Alabama loses that game and Alabama doesn't go to a BCS game, and Nick Saban's alma mater, Kent State, is in a BCS game, I, I, I guarantee you nobody saw that one coming uh, as much as five days ago. That would not make Saban happy. No. No. I mean, I'm sure he loves his alma mater. Sure. But that's not a trade he would take. I know the uh, Kent State Athletic Director, Joel Nielsen, told Coach Saban before the year started, I think we're going to get your 72 team off the schneid. I think we're going to get back to a bowl. And they are on the verge. Well, this Kent State BCS possibility has ripple effects around the college football landscape, including in the Big 12, where Texas faces Kansas State Saturday at 8 Eastern on ABC. Yeah, it, it has an impact tonight. You know, Kent State fans want to see Kansas State knock off Texas to improve their chances of getting to a BCS game. Because Texas at number 18, you beat the number six Kansas State team, you got a real possibility of moving up potentially ahead of Kent State. And then that UCLA Stanford result also of interest because UCLA holds that number 16 spot right now in the BCS that the Golden Flashes need to get to. Bishop gets the tackle for loss. So six conference champion automatic bids, the four at-large bids. Notre Dame, we know Florida's going to be one, and Oregon. Fourth spot, that's the one that maybe, that's the one still open. Well, yeah, the, the, the early leader appears to be, well, the loser mm -hmm. of the Big 12, mm -hmm. either Kansas State or Oklahoma. But the Mac could mess all that up. On the draw on second down. Nothing much doing. We go to back to Chris Carter. Carter, Rod, we got a big night of college basketball over on ESPN. It's an SEC Big East Challenge doubleheader right now with about seven minutes left to go. Georgetown, John Thompson the third with a one-point lead over Tennessee. Syracuse and Arkansas immediately to follow. Send it back to Ford Field. The Marathon MAC Championship game. Kent State hasn't won it in 40 years. Northern Illinois trying to go back to back after they hadn't won it in 28. This is third and eight for the Golden Flashes. Spencer Keith heaving long, dangerous. How close? Is it a pick? It's a spectacular pick by Deshaun Durant. And, and that, that was great. But the fact that Keith made the throw was shocking. He has nobody open. There's double coverage here. Here comes Durant behind. You see Ward in front. There's no way to squeeze that in. Look at that catch. And he has the left foot in and then the right foot in. Watch the two feet. Ball's caught. Foot down, foot down, and then foot down again, just for good measure. Deshaun Durant, the sophomore, who is coming back from injury, missed a good chunk of the max season. Back in time to make a terrific interception. Yeah, the tide is starting to change here. Huskies have scored the last 10. Get the takeaway. Lynch deep ball incomplete. Off the hands of Martell Moore. 
Well, we talked about the slow start for Lynch. The last two series, he's kind of turned it around. He had eight carries for 34 yards, and he was seven of seven until that incompletion. Of the Heisman campaign for Jordan Lynch, he says, I've always wanted to be one of those guys in New York City. No problem with the Heisman campaign that Northern Illinois started for him in his junior year. Now was knocked away by Richard Gray. They're down. I was surprised, however, at how slowly he started tonight. Mm -hmm. and, and then it dawned on me, well, you know, he hasn't started in a championship game before. And all the hype, all the pressure, BCS game, and hey, big stage, you're a Heisman guy, go show the nation. That's a lot to deal with to start a ball game. After the slow start for the Huskies, they've scored 10 straight. Six seconds, five. I don't think he knows. Yep. Huskies will have to use a timeout. Second charge, timeout of the half. The one Northern remaining Illinois. in the half for Dave Doran. Marathon Mac Football Championship brought to you by Wrangler. Nothing beats Wrangler comfort. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. And World of Warcraft Miss of Pandaria in stores now. Rated T. Well, Detroit's gotten used to hosting the Marathon Mac Championship, but rarely has a BCS possibility been on the line. You think back to 2008, Brady Hoke's Ball State team was in position. They were at number 12 in the BCS. Coming into the Mass MAC championship game, lost to Turner Gill's Buffalo team. It was Dave Davis, a quarterback, right? Uh, yeah. There yeah. There you go. Drafted by? 49ers. Third down here for Jordan Lynch in Northern Illinois. He's rolling across the 50 first down for the Huskies. Lynch converts on third and 10. Good block from Akeem Daniels. Well, you said it, partner. I mean, Akeem Daniels, more than just a running back. Watch him there as he gets out to the edge and opens up. Right now, that's a big guy he takes on. He's on Dana Brown and keeps him out of the play. Running back on the nose guard. Daniels takes a pop when he gets it the next time. Jake Dooley, who's back in the game. Well, that's the reward for the block. It's yeah. like, hey, okay. <laughs> you keep that blocking guy. like that, we're going to feed you. We're going to give you the football. Go get Akeem Daniels. Daniels, a junior from Kissimmee, Florida, averaging six yards a carry. And the brother played defensive back for the Huskies. Lynch hit as he throws, way incomplete. Needed the arm strength to get it out of bounds. Well, one of the noon games tomorrow that has the BCS implications, uh, Oklahoma and TCU, and you know the Sooners are rooting against a MAC team taking a BCS spot. Yeah, if they had it their way, both these teams would, would lose. <laughs> but but they'd prefer Kent State to lose since uh, Northern Illinois has further to go to get to that magical number 16 spot in the BCS. Bob Stoops coached in this league as an assistant. Four seconds, three seconds. When Northern Illinois is going to have to use their last time out. Yeah. Second time on this drive. They've not gotten the play call in in time and have had to use a timeout. So no timeouts remaining for Northern Illinois in the first half. Facing third and seven. Northern Illinois won 11 straight. Only Ohio State and Notre Dame have longer winning streaks. Tied 10 all with 17th ranked Penn State. Out of the third Northern Illinois timeout of the first half, third and seven. Moore is up to the top in the slot. Lynch pressured. Trying to scramble, and he has another first down run on third and long. How does he do that? There was just a small hole in the pocket. Watch him step up and find it. There's not a lot of room. Watch him dip right there out to his left. And a good job by Perez laying off the block in the back. 
Now passing wise Lynch has missed his last three after seven straight completions on the counter handing off to Daniels who has 10 more before Polk brings him down Huskies inside the Kent State 25. Well they're starting to get it going and it's a little bit frustrating for Kent State. You know you get the third and long and then Lynch breaks your back. To look at Lynch and the numbers for Northern Illinois versus what Kent State has been able to do. Lynch is going to keep it again. Now he flings it out. Bobbled and caught by Tommy Lee Lewis. That is. You got to be ready for the pass on yeah, the fast break, right? That's that triple option that mm -hmm. we've talked about all week as we watched it on tape. The first option is giving it or faking it to the, to the running back. And then the second option is for Lynch to run with it. The third option is, hey, just like the old option when you pitch, this time you throw it. So it may be spread out across 50 yards or yep. more on the field, but it's still a triple option. Yep. Northern Illinois inside the Kent State 20. Last time in the red zone, came away with a touchdown. Lynch to Moore. Moore had over 1,000 yards receiving this season. He is the go-to guy on the outside. And when you overplay Lynch, that usually opens up something for Moore with single coverage. Moore, a senior from San Antonio, Texas, cousin of Wayne McGarity, great wide receiver for the Horns. Lynch on first and goal, lowers the shoulder, gets to the five. Darius Polk on the stop. You see how spread out that defense is at the goal line because they've got so many receivers all over the place and only five guys really near the line of scrimmage to handle a running quarterback. I mean, that's the design of that. Force you to defend the field and then see if you can tackle the bull of the quarterback. Second and goal. Who else but Lynch? Oh, there's the bull. Is he down just shy? He appears to be. Luke Wallet met him at the one. Are you catching or are you hitting? Well, guess what? With Lynch, you often catch. Man, he lowers the shoulder and delivers the big, big boom on Luke Wallet. Power eye backfield on third and goal. Lynch hands off. Daniels goes flying, reaching, scoring. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Sixteen straight for the Huskies. Elevation by Daniels and watch the football. He extends the ball to break the play. He's not there yet, but now. Now, when he puts that ball out there, he breaks the point. There's your clear picture. Matthew Sims makes it 17 straight for Northern Illinois. After a rough, rough start, Jordan Lynch has gotten it going. And Illinois has to go into 17 straight points. They're up. Well, it was a slow start for the Heisman hopeful Jordan Lynch. But the Huskies have found their rhythm. Rolled to 17 straight points now against Kent State. Last year when it was Chandler Harnish quarterbacking Northern Illinois, they got down 20 points in this MAC championship game to Ohio. Came back and won it. Well, and Harnish was considered the best quarterback mm -hmm. ever here. Now folks are talking about Lynch being better than Harnish. Huskies kicking away from Dree Archer. So get it from the 35. A chance for us to check with Chris Carter. Carter, we're set for a great finish at the Verizon Center. Tennessee and Georgetown. It's a one-point Georgetown lead right now. Under 28 seconds left to go. Georgetown just inbounded the ball over on ESPN. And a turnover gets it back to the Vols. So this one's going right down to the wire. And after this one, it's Syracuse and Arkansas. There's Jimmy Dykes and Dave O'Brien enjoying a word with Coach Beheim. They're going to tip it up at about 8.35, guys. Uh, Jimmy, you guys, I you're front uh, they got pretty good length, <laughs> pretty good size. <laughs> does he know you do that? Yeah. Yeah, he knows everybody does it. <laughs> 
We had a good chat with Coach Beheim when we were up at Syracuse for the uh, Connecticut game. Last time that Kent State had the football, an impressive interception from Deshaun Durant. Oh, and nearly another great pick by his teammate, Rashawn Melvin. Yeah, Melvin read this completely. I mean, he's on top of this. Look at him. He's looking at the quarterback. He sees the receiver stop, and he looks like the receiver. Completely ate that one up. This offense is out of rhythm. They have to find something. They've gone a long time without any flow or rhythm to the offense. So it, it, it begins with Dre, Dre Archer. I mean, they got to find a way to get him back involved. Kent State has only two first downs in the game now. All the numbers on Northern Illinois' side, including the takeaway the last time they had it. Three seconds here, two. Keith gets it off, finds Durham. Dropped in the backfield. Nabal Jefferson, the first Husky there. And see, the, the problem with that is now it puts you in the worst possible position. You've got third and long. You're going to allow those defensive ends to just really get into those sprinters stances and come after you and a lot more pressure on Keith. Rogar and Baxter have 17 and a half sacks between them. The average third down for Kent State tonight has been third and seven. Which leads to one for six. There's the pressure and there's the sack. Keep dropped by Ken Bishop. There's so much pressure on the outside that Bishop is taking advantage of it on the inside. They have to, to double and make sure they take care of the ends. Bishop is killing his guy inside. Look at 93. Look at him just push the center back and work him. You kidding me? Now the Huskies are mauling him up front, oh. especially getting to third down. That's the second sack. But they forced Kent State into third and long and teed off. Melchiori punts. Sebastiano, fair catch at the 37. Our Friday focus. All of college football watching on Friday, getting ready for championship games around the country at Tulsa. That's a uh, on-campus game between UCF and Tulsa. And the ACC, it's Florida State and Georgia Tech. Yeah, we have some Orange Bowl officials here tonight. They're going to be heading to that one tomorrow. And Nebraska, Wisconsin, Big Ten Championship, Rose Bowl on the line there. And then, of course, in the SEC Championship, a spot in the BCS title game awaits either Alabama or Georgia. And the loser of that SEC Championship game will slip out of the BCS. Flag down on first down. Tommy Lee Lewis, worth pointing out in 2014, you're not going to have the restriction of just two teams from a conference like you have right now that keeps the yeah. runner-up in the SEC out of the BCS. Yeah, no restriction, but I don't know that that's going to change practically. The illegal shift, offense, two men moving at the snap, five-yard penalty remains, first down. And what I mean by that is that you're going to have, you know, 11 to 15 guys on the committee choosing. Unlikely they're going to go, let's put three SEC teams in. You've seen what Northern Illinois has done on the last three versus absolutely nothing on the first three possessions. That's led to the 17 unanswered for the Huskies. Lynch drops. Boy, two defenders right there on him this time. Zach Hitchens, the defensive end, gets it first. Uh, they they want to put them in a tough situation. They geared up for Jordan Lynch on the first down. Now this is the critical uh, down for them. I mean, can they keep them and Lynch to two or three yards and create the third and long? Complete outside. The cutback for a first down across the 50. Well, not only do they get to manageable, they get the first down. Nakeem Daniels picks it up. Nix finally stops him. Well, no pressure. He has plenty of time, and Daniels just really makes this happen by himself. How many guys does he make miss? Four? How many guys are out there? <laughs> just about all of them. 
Lynch play fake takes a big hit but completes to Ashford to the 32. Now you're starting to see the full game that Jordan Lynch has. Now it's about the arm. Earlier it was about the legs. Lynch the junior from Chicago Mount Carmel High School said Northern Illinois was the only school that gave him the chance to play quarterback recruited by some of the big conference guys but they wanted him to play another position so he came to Northern Illinois to Cal to play quarterback and in his first year as the starter he has put up tremendous numbers third in the nation in total offense fifth in the nation in rushing yards he has more rushing yards than guys like Monte Ball yeah. and Denard Robinson yeah 1600 yards rushing for a quarterback wow Lynch pressured, heaves, picked off inside the five. Leon Green intercepts it. He never had anything there. Too much confidence in that arm. Too much confidence. Two safeties sitting in the middle of the field, and he thinks he can drill it in there. Now watch him try and get the ball inside. That's Brown to the outside and you saw on the inside it was Lewis number 10 who kind of eased up but still you got two safeties sitting right there and he tries to squeeze that in there over the head of Moore maybe that's who he was looking for but that was poorly thrown and Moore wasn't open just the fifth interception this year thrown by Jordan Lynch the 23rd interception by the Kent State defense. Trayon Durham on first down. Out of the shadows to the 14. Keith backs into the shotgun with Durham. Durham to the 19. Trayon Durham's a guy committed to Wisconsin as a fullback, but Kent State offered him the chance to be a big tailback as a sophomore, over 1,200 rushing yards now. Well, that combination, you've got power with Durham and speed and quickness with Archer. Play fake from Keith. Finds Dree Archer knocked out. Prior to third down, Chris Carter. Well, in about a minute, 19 seconds on the HB halftime report, we're going to talk about the game going on on the farm right now. Pac-12 championship between Stanford and UCLA. We'll give you an update. Plus, Mayday and Coach Holtz give us their picks for a big championship weekend, and we'll check in with the game day crew down in Atlanta. That's coming up on the HB halftime report. Chris with Mark May and Kent State alone. Lou Holtz. Third down and two here. Rolling near a minute remaining in the half. Kent State only one third down conversion. Durham close. Now with Northern Illinois, no timeouts. This is basically a game of keep away by Kent State. Let's see if they uh, take a shot at some oh, yeah. point. But. Yeah, it, it may be more than keep away. You got a first down here now. You got three timeouts and a buck 20. You're at your own 25. Open it up. And you have a kicker who Coach Hazel told us we got no problem trying him from 55. Now the question is, how do you defend Archer? Do they double him and leave someone else in single coverage? Archer's in the slot. He looks the other way takes the sack back at the 18 but a flag down looks like Anthony Wells got the face mask on the sack there is no foul in the play the helmet opening was not grabbed second down the clock will start on my signal never mind Anthony yeah Good play Yeah, he got all shoulder pad. That's a great, great call. Way to pick up the flag. 
Third sack by the Northern Illinois defense, and now you see the clock rolling under 30, 35 seconds now. Draw, Archer takes a big paw back at the 10, so and Kent State's gonna take the football to the half, yeah. down by seven. Yeah, this is going in the wrong direction for Kent State. Literally. The Golden Flash has scored the first 10 points of the game. Northern Illinois, the defending MAC champions, storm back with 17 straight. So with the MAC championship and the possibility of a BCS berth on the line, it's That's Northern the Illinois the first half. with a 17-10 lead on Kent State here at Ford Field in Detroit. And Kent State will receive the football to begin the second half. Sit it down to Jamel Hill. Uh, Coach, your offense got off to a slow start, and then Jordan Lynch really caught fire. What clicked for him despite that interception there in the end? Well, I think he was a little fired up there at the beginning, you know. It just took him a little bit to get going. And uh, we'll make plays, you know. He's got to settle down and play the game. And that's what happened in the second quarter. Disappointed in the interception. I know he'll make up for it, though, in the second half. You're a half away from a second consecutive MAC title. What do you have to do to close this out? We've got to play 30 minutes. We've got to take the ball away. We've got to protect it on offense. Just be ourselves. That's all we got to do. That's what got us here. Thank you, Coach. Uh, you're welcome. Dave Dorn and the Northern Illinois Huskies, 17 straight to take a touchdown late of the half. We send you on to Chris, Mark, and Lou, the HP Halftime Report. This is Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Welcome once again to Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation. And Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer at the Marathon MAC Championship. Two ranked teams going at it with a potential BCS spot on the line. A 10-0 start for Kent State, but 17 unanswered for Northern Illinois as we get ready to kick off the second half. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, our Friday night crew from Detroit's Ford Field. Dre Archer, who has three kickoff returns for touchdowns this year, number one in the FBS. So that's why Northern Illinois kicks away from him. This is Josh Boyle. Good field position for Kent State to begin the second half. Well, Rod Gilmore, we know number 16 is the magic number for Kent State or potentially Northern Illinois to get to to try and get in the BCS. A half into this yeah. MAC championship. It is either of these teams a BCS capable team? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I think there are a couple of matchups out there that might work for them. I mean, the MAC has dominated the Big East this season, and I think they do okay against a Big Ten team. I'm not sure they'd get that matchup, but we could have that. I mean, we're 30 minutes away from that possibility if they get help in a couple of other quarters. And the best-case scenario for Kent State would be a Stanford win over UCLA in that Pac-12 championship game going on now, and a Kansas State win over Texas to knock the Bruins and the Longhorns back. It's Trayon Durham, first down carry. So let's look again at 16 to 21 of the BCS. Yeah, and that's the magic number, getting to 16. It takes a couple things now. You got to jump ahead of a UCLA team that right now is locked in a battle with Stanford. And then you need Texas, which plays tomorrow. You need them to lose as well. And if you get those things to happen, you got a shot to get to number 16 or better and maybe wind up talking to one of those gentlemen at the Orange Bowl. Well, Orange Bowl representatives are here. That would be the likely spot for a team from the MAC if they get to the uh, BCS at large. Sugar Bowl reps are also here. Spencer Keith completes to Trayon Durham. First down. Golden flashes with some much needed punch in the offensive game. Only 50 yards of offense in the first half. Well, and they got to do better on first down. I mean, before this drive started, they had 11 first down plays and they had 11 yards. So they were averaging 0.0, .0 on first down. So that play was a second down play, but now you gotta get back to getting it going. First down. I thought sure you were gonna say Mr. Blutarski. 
Mr. Blutorski, huh? GPA is 0. 0.0. <laughs> <laughs> Otis, he loves us. <laughs> Keith from the shotgun. Option. Toss. To the 25. Let's check in with Jamel. So, Carter, not only do you not get, uh, uh, remember the Titans references, but also <laughs> not Animal House. Uh, I talked to Coach Daryl Hazel at halftime about his lack of offensive production, and he said we have to block up front. He said their three technique is giving them a lot of problems. He said if we protect our quarterback, we'll be in a much better position to compete in the second half. Yeah, that three technique would be Keith Bishop, who was living in the backfield. We showed you that in the first half. And I did get the Animal House reference. <laughs> That's Dury Archer. Not been much of a factor. Archer shoved back. Archer, the guy who's averaging 197 all-purpose yards, fifth in the nation. Yeah, he, he is the big play guy, and they pretty much held him in check. There was the one reverse for the short touchdown, but other than that, he hasn't been a big factor tonight. Only 10 rushing yards, nine in the receiving game. And Northern Illinois is smartly kicked away from him on kickoffs. Third and seven. Archer's in the slot at the top. Keith pumps, heaves it long for Humphrey. Incomplete, but a flag down on Rashawn Melvin. Uh, Melvin was in pretty good shape. He he didn't have to have a little contact there. He played this okay, but you see the grab? He didn't have to grab. All he had to do was turn around and play the ball. Pass interference. Defense, number 11, 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. And remember in college football, 15 yards rather than a, a spot foul like you'd have in the pros. Now can Kent State take advantage? Last time... In the red zone, they settled for a field goal to go up 10-0. Northern Illinois has rattled off 17 straight cents. Well, this is an area where Durham could really be effective for them. Big back. Trayon Durham takes it on first down. It's about three on the edge. Sean Evans makes the stop. He's a tough guy to tackle one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, about 5'11", 250 pounds. Where, where do you wrap him? Grab him. Where do you wrap him up? It's hard to do. He's the only player to rush for 100 yards versus Rutgers this year. He and Dree Archer, the first pair of 1,000-yard rushers in Kent State history. First down marker's the one. Keith, throwback, complete. But not much there. Urjavec, the tight end, makes the stop. Joe Windsor tracks him down. Huskies, solid. How about Windsor reversing his field and getting back out there to make that play? I mean, this defensive line has been really active, really athletic, able to run from sideline to sideline. And now they force Kent State into third and seven. Uh, when you don't pick up much on first down, it leaves you with these long third down situations. And they have not fared well against Mr. Bishop inside and Progar and Baxter on the edge. Play fake. Keith pumps, throws incomplete. Was looking for a hurdle and threw it out the back of the end zone. Fourth down, kicking unit comes on for the Golden Flashes. Into the red zone, settling yep. for a field goal attempt. Can't do it. Can't do it. Got to get touchdowns down there. Cortez, who had a game-winning 25-yarder versus Ball State. This one's from 24. Freddy Cortez, 24-yarder is good. So Kent State on the board again, but they failed to get in the end zone, and Northern Illinois still has a 17-13 lead in Detroit. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. 
The Ambassador Bridge here in Detroit. Home of Ford Field, home of the 2012 Marathon MAC Championship, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. 17-13 now, Northern Illinois leading Kent State. We talked about all the BCS possibilities in 2012. Interesting to note, we were playing under the 2014 rules. The winner of this game would be set up with the Access Bowl trip. No, mm -hmm. uh, no number requirement. It would be the highest rated in the group of five. Freddy Cortez kickoff. Lewis takes a knee. We check with Chris Cotter. Well, it's going down to the farm where UCLA, unlike last week, has given Stanford a game here. How about this redshirt freshman, Brett Hundley, going 48 yards, getting UCLA back into scoring territory after Kevin Hogan had scored for Stanford, and then Hundley took it himself from five yards out. UCLA up right now 14 to 7 over Stanford. And it's a Stanford team that just one week ago took care of business at the Rose Bowl. Let's go back to Ford Field. Rod? It's not making the Kent, the Kent State fans happy. <laughs> UCLA occupies that number 16 spot. That's the magic number for the uh, MAC champion, be it Kent State or Illinois. Less of a possibility to go from 21 to 16. But that's the uh, that's the magic number to get that BCS spot. And that's where UCLA is. Yeah, and, and they also need Texas to lose so that Texas doesn't jump them. Jordan Lynch incomplete on second and six. Boy, went through one receiver off the back of Jamison Wells, and lucky for the Huskies, didn't ricochet to a Kent State defender. At times, he's just too strong, too strong with the throws. We've seen that a few times tonight. Northern Illinois has converted its last four third down opportunities. And that's been mostly Jordan Lynch when he drops back and finds nobody and takes off scrambling. Lynch had 192 yards of total offense in the first half. Lynch is going to throw this one. Well, now the Huskies appear to be in sync. There it goes to Perez Ashford. Those were the throws and the routes that were so off at the beginning of the game. Yeah, exactly right. Timing was perfect there. And how about Ashford? Good to see him back out there. He's been back for a couple of weeks with that knee injury. He played great in last year's MAC championship game. Third game back from a knee injury for the senior from Shaker Heights, recruited by P.J. Fleck, who's now a member of the Tampa Bay Buck staff. Lynch rolls. I mean, just when nothing's there, he finds he turns the corner, falls forward, picks up seven yards. Yeah, and, and it looked like it was a stop play. And now you have second and three, second and four. I mean, we talked about the comparison, the Colin Klein. He's very much like that. He's 22 yards away from that record by Denard Robinson for rushing yards by a quarterback in a season. That's incomplete off the hands of Martell Moore. Meaning third down and three. Meaning don't be surprised to see Jordan Lynch rolling again to try and move the chain. Yeah, I mean, the thing that, that has worked for them in these third down situations is spread them out with three, four receivers and give Lynch the option of trying to find somebody with his arm. If he doesn't, just take off and pick up the first down. 69 rushing yards in the game for Jordan Lynch, who is fifth in the nation in rushing yards a game. He's going to roll to the edge again. Lynch puts the shoulder down, takes a pop. Close. Big spot coming. Luke Batten met him right at the first down marker along with Luke Wallet. Time out for a measurement. Obviously from that spot, the unofficial yellow line looks like fourth down coming. And what do you do? Do you kick it or do you go for it here? Let's watch the tackle and that spot looks like it was pretty much on the money there. I'll tell you, if I've got Jordan Lynch, I'm going for it on fourth and inches. Yeah, I, I hear you. The, the problem is, You've been methodically taking control of the game. You miss this, you give momentum and you give field position to Kent State. We'll see what Dave Doran does, the second year head coach at Northern Illinois. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I understand why he would want to do it with Jordan Lynch, but you know, you are rolling the dice here. I want Jordan Lynch to roll those dice for sure.
Fourth down. Lynch moves the chains. Jordan Lynch shedding defenders inside the five. He runs with such determination. A fourth and about two inches. And he has, he wants more. I mean, watch the, the determination here. Once he gets it, he never breaks stride. Nothing holds him back. Runs through arm tackles. Good call, coach. <laughs> Way to go. Good job. With that 45-yard rush, Jordan Lynch sets the record for single-season rushing yards by a quarterback, passing Denard Robinson's record from two years ago. Takes a break on first down, hands off to Akeem Daniels, fighting around the one. It'll be second and goal from inside the one. Norman Wolf stops Daniels. That's got to be Lynch here. Got to be Lynch. Instead, it's Daniels, and he's stuffed. Third and goal for Northern Illinois. Well, you had your choice of Jordan Lynch or the 180-pound Akeem Daniels. Now, Daniels did have the short touchdown leap in the first half. Yep. Third and goal from the one. Really? What a stop it would be for Kent State. Anybody other than Lynch? You, you've tried that twice without him already. Here he is. Picking his way for a touchdown. Converts on fourth and inches with a 45-yard run. And when the Huskies needed Jordan Lynch, he was there. Yeah, they had two big backs in the backfield. They actually put defensive tackle Keith Bishop back there, number 93, as a lead blocker. After the slow start for Jordan Lynch in the Northern Illinois offense, the junior from Chicago, the MAC MVP, showing why the Huskies and maybe a few others putting him in the Heisman discussion. The 2012 Marathon MAC Football Championship, brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. In Detroit, home of the 2012 Marathon MAC Championship, Northern Illinois claimed the lead on Kent State, but a history of comebacks in this MAC Championship. BCS implications in Oklahoma TCU noon, and then the ACC Championship game, Florida State Georgia Tech. We know this about Oklahoma and TCU. TCU wins that game, Oklahoma loses, Kansas State's the Big 12 champ. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, Rod, you say Kansas State, even with a loss to Texas. Yeah. I still, still a think, possibility. Yeah, well, they'd still be an at-large eligible team. They wouldn't fall out of the top 14. Oh! Got a yimmy, huge hit at the 29. Blow delivered by Giorgio Bowers. Ooh. That's wicked. That is wicked. Boy, proves the point, Rod, in this age of uh, targeting and of so many flags you see for tacklers going up high. You can still have a vicious <laughs> defensive play perfectly legal. Yeah, you can. That's an example. Yeah, you can. Three Archer in the backfield next to Spencer Keith. Archer on the counter. Dropped by Jacques. We check with Chris Carter. An update from the Pac-12 championship down on the farm. And just talking about Brett Hundley here driving UCLA once again. But Ed Reynolds, Stanford safety, picks him off. And look at this run back. 
Looking like our friend Rod Gilmore back in the days on the farm, making everybody miss. Looks like he's going to be gone. He gets caught on the one-yard line. They would review it. It would stand. That's all right, though. No, Stephon Taylor punches it in one play later, and we are tied. I think Rod would have gotten the end zone. Yeah, you don't get caught. Yeah, you would have gotten the end zone. Here's some breakaway speed. Although Ed Reynolds does have three pick sixes this year. <laughs> Spencer Keith pressured again. Sacked again. That's bringing Rainey off the edge. A little pressure. They haven't blitzed an awful lot, particularly on early downs. And he's just to the right of your screen. Just a swim move to the inside. He's all the way home. That's Not a lot to it. Just a swim move inside. That's on the four-time All-Mac left tackle, Brian Winters. NFL prospect. Four sacks by the Huskies. This is a bad deal right now. They're, they're coming after. Look, they're, they're like sprinters right now. And they're off. Screen batted into the hands of the right guard, Pat McShane. From Adiemi. They're going to call it incomplete. Incomplete pass. Fourth down. And that's why he's playing right guard. Yeah. <laughs> but how about a nice little effort there by Pro Guard to say, hey, my ball, I caught that. Good acting. Back to drawing the cards. Well, how worried are the golden flashes now? Down 24 to 13. The offense stalls out again. Just 67 yards of offense for the Kent State Golden Flashes. And yet, as Dr. Lou pointed out, Despite those offensive troubles, they're still in this game. Sunday night, the mystery ends. We unveil the matchups to all the BCS Bowls. The Rose Bowl game, Discover Orange Bowl, All-State Sugar Bowl, Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Discover BCS National Championship game. The Discover Card BCS selection show Sunday, 8.30. The question is... Will one of these MAC hmm. teams be in there? Most likely, it's Kent State. They have the best chance to go from 17 to 16 with a little help. Northern Illinois at 21. It would be a uh, steep climb for the Huskies. Lynch, incomplete. Yeah, I think his arm got hit. Yeah, that was a one receiver route. So they were max protecting. And I think he stepped up and, and just got his arm where the ball touched a little bit. Here comes the pressure. Yeah, I think he got he got just flashed a little bit. It's Jake Dooley who put that pressure on Lynch. Either way, well short, second down. Akeem Daniels on the read to make it third and about four. Well, this this defense for Kent State needs to step up and make a play if they're gonna get back in this ballgame. I mean, you got to have a stop here or you're going to have to get a takeaway, but they need something to shift the momentum down 24-13 and Northern Illinois just kind of rolling offensively. This is that formation where they give Lynch the option. He can tuck it and just scramble. Straight ahead. First down, Jordan Lynch moves the pile, moves the chain. See, when you when they spread them out like that, you only have four or five guys around the line of scrimmage to defend in the box. And so you got five on five blocking, and he just takes off. Well, Lynch and the Huskies really struggled out of the gate. You heard Dave Doran tell Jamel at the half, really surprised by the way Lynch and the offense came out slow, but they found their rhythm. Throwing on first down, complete to Martell Moore. Well, Jordan Lynch has uh, passed Denard Robinson for the single season rushing record. Only two quarterbacks in FBS history, 1,500 rushing yards and 2,500 passing yards. Look at that, 41 touchdowns. Mm. It's crazy. Including the last touchdown for Northern Illinois.
Lynch pressured and hit, but he completes outside to Deron Brown. You know, you mentioned Lynch's slow start in the ballgame. You know what happens to a lot of folks? Happens to me. Is that you get so worked up for a big game that even during warm-ups, you, you're out of breath and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to play an entire ball game when I'm spent during warm-ups. You buy into the uh, quarterback gets hit the first time and wakes up a little bit? Yeah, yeah, there's some of that. There's a series or two sometimes you need to go through and just relax and go, wait a minute, what's on the line doesn't matter. It's just football. Ball start. Ball start. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, remains, first down. In 2012, Jordan Lynch, even with all the numbers he's put up, I don't think Jordan Lynch is, is the Heisman campaign, I don't think he's going to take hold in 2012. But 2013, I mean, this is, with what he's done this year as a junior, he's going into he'll his senior season. Yeah, yep. he'll be on the radar. He'll start the season next year on the list of guys to look out for. Now, they'll need on their schedule a premier game mm. where he can knock off somebody. First and 15. Lynch escapes. Makes something out of nothing. It's about seven before Batten throws him out of bounds. <laughs> really? Is it just me or does, does he remind you of Colin Klein a little bit too? Absolutely. You know, and, and numbers-wise, again, he's third in the nation in total offense. That's behind only... Nick Florence, the Baylor quarterback, and Johnny Manziel. I mean, he really is kind of a tailback playing quarterback or a linebacker playing quarterback. He's That's got a, a pretty decent arm. That's exactly what all those other programs thought. Hey, why don't you just play linebacker? He wanted to be a quarterback. Sat behind Chandler Harnish, first year as a starter. He's the MAC MVP. And he's got Northern Illinois on point. Yeah, I mean, he may not be a classic drop back passer beautiful technique and all that but he certainly gets it done throwing and there's no question about his toughness his vision as a runner his his real sense of what to do with the football I mean, he just he has a knack of running with the football two big 10 teams on the schedule for the huskies in 2013 iowa and purdue lynch incomplete those aren't well, and huge marquee games, but they're they're two big ten yeah, opponents. Yeah, and that would help him. But he's got to perfect that that throw, the intermediate or the touch pass. And he's got a rifle for an arm, but the touch pass and timing pass, those are things that he needs to improve on for next year. Well, this breaks a streak for Northern Illinois. The last three times inside the Kent State 20, they had a touchdown. They will settle for a field goal attempt here now. Matthew Sims from 29. Sims 29 yarder is good and Northern Illinois is trying to bust the potential BCS busters from Kent State 27-13. Well, speaking of BCS busters, Kansas State still has a looking for a win to secure a Big 12 title and a trip to the Fiesta Bowl against the Texas Longhorns and that Texas team is going to be quarterback by Case McCoy. David Ash is hurt, so it's McCoy versus Colin Klein. Texas, Kansas State, Saturday, 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC. And the last chance for Colin Klein to make his case for the Heisman. How big a game does Colin Klein have to have against Texas to capture the Heisman Trophy? Well, it, it can't be workmanlike. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's got to be a phenomenal game. It's got to be one of these games that somehow combats what's gone on with Manti Teo and what's gone on with Johnny Football. I mean, he needs that kind of a game to be in the same discussion or to leap over, you know, those guys. Northern Illinois again, keeping it away from Dre Archer. This is Addy Yemi across the 45. Addy Yemi to the Husky 38. Good field position. First, we check with Chris Cotter. The Sports Center right now brought to you by Marmot. The Spurs have been fined $250,000 by the NBA for sending Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili home instead of playing them against the Heat last night so they could rest for the Spurs' home game Saturday night against the Grizz in the Pac-12 championship game right now. Tied at 14 after this 80-yard interception return. Got the football down to the one for the Cardinals. Stephon Taylor 
plunged over on the next play. 14-14, guys. You know, 20 years ago, David Stern levied a $25,000 fine. Mm. Is that the rate of inflation? That's an expensive, uh, it's an expensive plane ride for the San Antonio Ooh. Spurs, I guarantee. Those are some expensive packs of peanuts the Spurs got. <laughs> I guess that is what they give you yeah. in Southwest. Yeah, huh? that's right. <laughs> Excellent customer service. Dreon Durham gets four there. Well, what does Kent State need to do to grab the momentum back from Northern Illinois? Well, I think Durham's got to help out a little bit, and Keith has got to make some plays. They have taken Archer out of the ball game. I mean, he's on the field, but he's just not been effective the way they've defended him. Incomplete. Intended for Hurdle, barely a forward pass. Make it third and six. I mean, the season numbers have been terrific for Kent State, and the offensive numbers tonight just ugly. Yeah, you see that only 18 tonight, and and that was the plan for Northern Illinois: come in and throttle the rushing attack and force Keith to beat them with his arm. And, and they just haven't been able to get it done. I mean, Archer has been doubled when he's been in the slot. In the backfield, they've shut down the rushing attack. So where do you go? Now, now move him around, motion him, find a way to get him free, but he's got to get away from the double coverage. Three Archer has all of 15 yards in this game. Averages 197. There's Dree Archer, first down Kent State. Jamal Bass makes the stop. One of the few times that he was singled up in the zone coverage, he found the soft spot, didn't have to worry about fending off two defenders. He must be incredibly frustrated. Durham on first down. Rolling over Husky defenders. Chance to look at some great teamwork brought to you by Russell Athletic. Well, that teamwork has really been by this defense, particularly pressure up front. Hopkins in there. Wells getting in there. Here comes Rainey. It's been any number of guys up front putting pressure on Keith at quarterback. Total for Northern Illinois, but second and two for Kent State now inside the Husky 20. Durham. Moves the chains. First and 10, Kent State from the 15. He's, he's the guy that can help you out down here. We talked about that earlier, getting him involved. Not just running him here. You know, you can even throw a screen pass out to him and get him in the one-on-one -on -one situation where he's hard to tackle. But they have to get a touchdown here. They're in the red zone. Dre Archer's got a uh, wardrobe malfunction. The helmet not working, no. so... Okay. Archer uh, <laughs> Archer gets his helmet tightened up. Presumably we'll see him back out there. Play fake. Keep pressured. Sacked again. Fifth sack of the game by Northern Illinois. He actually got rid of that. Oh, incomplete. Correction. Yeah. Right before Baxter got it. Yeah. He, he got rid of it to, av to avoid the sack. But Baxter was on him quickly. Look at him, just nobody touches him. They thought he'd be influenced by that play and go inside, but no, Baxter read it perfectly, waited, and made the play. Three trips to the red zone for Kent State, only one touchdown. Can't do it, can't do it. They need a touchdown to make it a one possession game. There's Archer. Barely getting the play off. Three Archer, two yards maybe, third down coming with the seconds ticking away in the third. The past two years, there have been big comebacks to determine the MAC championship. Miami of Ohio two years ago on Northern Illinois, the Huskies did it last year. In 2012, can the Golden Flashes come back to capture the MAC? Fourth quarter in Detroit at Ford Field in the Marathon MAC Championship, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. 
Kent State dreams of a first MAC championship in 40 years and a potential spot in a BCS bowl game. They need to get in the end zone. First play of the fourth quarter, third and eight. Tree Archer takes it and he is dropped just like Northern Illinois has done all night. They have taken Dree Archer out of this game. Well, you need a couple of scores. You need touchdowns. He's going to go for it here, it looks like. Well, Kent State has converted their last 12 fourth downs. The problem is, you know, they haven't really been able to handle Northern Illinois, so they don't feel good about their defense being able to stop Northern Illinois, which is why they're going for it here. Darrell Hazel going for it on just the second play of the fourth quarter. Tough. It's a long way to go to make this. Keith completes Archer well short. Nope. It's Northern Illinois football. Down by two touchdowns. Went for it on fourth and seven. It converted their last 12. But the golden flash is given right back to the Huskies. Well, the only positive thing for you defensively now, Kent State, is you got them backed up. If you can get a three and out and keep them down here, you can get the ball back in decent field position and say, well, you didn't lose that much out of it, maybe a couple of minutes off the clock. Golden Flashes still haven't crossed 100 yards of offense yeah. in this game. 98 right now, so That's Coach Hazel thinking, think hey, stuff. we, yeah. Yeah, we, we not going to have many opportunities the way they've been playing. And there's the defense teeing off. Zach Hitchens with a tackle for loss on Akeem Daniels. I, I know we keep talking about a BCS mm -hmm. being at stake tonight for the MAC. You know, there's a fair amount of money at stake for the MAC if they get into a BCS game. Eight million dollars is what you're looking million at. Eight million bucks to the conference. Well, actually, 12 to the conference mm -hmm. of all the small guys, then eight million to the MAC of that 12 million. That is uh, why there is a uh, intense focus from around the MAC on this MAC championship and what's going to happen between Northern Illinois and Kent State. Can either of these teams get to the Magic 16 spot in the BCS? An $8 million number is basically the difference between making a BCS and not making a BCS when it shakes out. Do you out. think any of that money would trickle down to some of these MAC coaches? I mean, these guys aren't, yeah. aren't paid yeah. big time, you know? Which is why life in the back, when you have a great season, like Dave Dorn and Daryl Hazel, and somebody else is going to come poach your head coach. That's yep. what happens when you're in the MAC. Like Jerry Kill, Northern Illinois. Mm -hmm. Go back Grady Hoke a few years ago. All State. Get back to Urban Meyer, Bowling Green. Here's your big third down. Lynch straight ahead. First down and more for the Huskies. The Golden Flash has had him backed up into third and long, and Lynch converts himself. Well, he keeps shredding the defense when he has to. Yeah, this is just Jordan Lynch. Now, a couple good blocks inside the double team right at the point of attack there. But look at Lynch pick his way through. Lynch has more rushing yards than Kent State has total offense tonight. Daniels gets it on first down for three, wrestled down by Batten. You know, we were talking about the coaching salaries in the MAC. I mean, take a look at, at this. You know, the NCAA average is about 1.64 million. Dorn makes 423,000. Hazel makes 300,000. That, that's not quite on the same level with the big conferences. And we asked both these coaches about the next coaching possibilities. Dave Doran said, I, my focus is strictly on the MAC championship. I'm not looking at it. Daryl Hazel said, I'm trying to not look at it right now. <laughs> Very honest answer. And that's just the reality. When you have a successful season in the MAC, people are going to come try and get you. Jordan Lynch picks up another first down. Jamel? And, and you talk about money and, and the lack of money these coaches make. Uh, to put this further into perspective, Coach Daryl Hazel, he doesn't even have it in his contract that he earns a bonus if they got a BCS bid. So he would be the one of the biggest bargains in college football, I would think. Mm, and I would hope that if Kent State found a way, they would find a, uh, a way, way to uh, make a bonus where there isn't one in the deal. I'm sure that would happen. 
sure Joel Nielsen would uh, find a way to take care of Coach Hazel. This is the best chance for a MAC team since 2008, Ball State. Tough running for McKean Daniels across the 40. Batten and Green on the stop. Yeah, th this defense is, is really getting frustrated and worn out. It, it hurts so much when you play well on first and second down, and then the quarterback breaks your back and picks up the first down on a run, a design run, a scramble. Boy, look at the rushing yard differential. 201 advantage Northern Illinois. Daniels cut back. First down into Golden Flash territory to the 35. Leon Green finally makes a stop on Akeem Daniels. Uh, it's time for Kent State to really roll the dice defensively. You have to start taking some chances because they're getting close to that third score that would put them ahead dramatically. Now, too much speed by Daniels to get to the outside. But now you have to think in terms of pressure, think in terms of blitzes, all those things to try and create a takeaway because you can't give up another score. Northern Illinois has already gotten into clock management, trying to bleed it down. Lynch gets a couple there. So Kent State, the team who was second in the nation in takeaways. Only Kansas State better than Kent State in takeaways. And the Golden Flashes need a takeaway at yeah, this point. Do. Yeah, they do. I mean, they, they actually can't afford to give up a few more yards here because that may trigger a field goal. Matthew Sims has a 54-yarder this year versus Western Michigan, and obviously indoors, no weather factor. Both coaches say they wouldn't hesitate to stretch their kicker's distances. Lynch keeps its third down coming. Yes, and Northern Illinois realizes this. You know, they're in position where even a field goal puts a lot more pressure on Kent State. It gives you three scores that you're ahead of, three possessions. From right here, it would be a 50-yarder. So within Matthew Sims' range. Yeah, I mean, you, you think Jordan Lynch picks up a couple more for you. you. You improve your chances, and you put a lot of pressure on Kent State without even trying to get the ball into the end zone. And the Huskies clearly winding the clock down. It's the 10th play of the drive. They've eaten up over five minutes. All rushing plays on this drive. Heavy pressure on third and seven. Lynch avoids the initial rush and then takes the sack from Dana Brown. Fourth down coming up. And let's see, a 53-yard field goal attempt would be what Northern Illinois would be facing. So. The punter, Ryan Neer, comes out to hit it right around the 50. I, I was surprised mm -hmm. by that call. Yeah, I thought they had it lined up, set up for just a few more yards, a couple more yards, and then kick the field goal. But now this is a much tougher field goal. Well, it, it's, it's, a a, it's not a field goal. It's a punt. Addy Yemi back for Kent State. Golden Flashes could use a momentum changer somewhere. Special teams included. Instead, Northern Illinois downs it inside the five. Boy, they flipped the field on them, didn't they? Kent State has 98 yards. They'll need to go about 98 to get in the end zone. Two ranked teams in the Marathon MAC Championship. So two teams with numbers next to their names playing for a conference championship. That's something that the Big Ten doesn't have. It's something that the ACC doesn't have. Something that the Big East didn't have with their uh, de facto championship game last night, won by Louisville. But it's been 21st ranked Northern Illinois with a two touchdown advantage on 17th ranked Kent State. Golden Flash is backed up inside their own five. Dree Archer, who has been bottled up, even with that run by Archer, he gets four there. He's got only 34 wow. yards of total offense in wow. the game. You know, I, I thought it was kind of odd seeing Kent State ranked ahead mm -hmm. of Northern Illinois. Now, the computers have held back Northern Illinois a little bit, but 
e even in some of the, the, the human polls, they, a two-time, a defending champ has been in this game twice before tonight. I was surprised that they didn't get more love than Kent State got. Only lost by a point late to Iowa, game at Soldier Field, while Kent State was blown out by a bad Kentucky team. Keith pumps, heaves it long and incomplete. Boy, a hurdle got turned around. The ball was right there for him. Rashawn Melvin in coverage. So the, the real question as we start looking ahead at BCS, can Northern Illinois jump from here, 21, all the way up to here, number 16? That becomes the real test, assuming they hold on to this lead and win tonight. And so eyes on the, the Pac-12 yeah. as well. Even if UCLA and Texas were to lose, well, you still have Michigan and Boise State, and the voters would have to say, we're so impressed. We're so impressed. We're going to move you ahead of them. Odds that that happens? I, I don't know that they've seen that tonight. Complete first down for Kent State. Golden Flash is trying to mount a comeback. They had a 14-point comeback to beat Akron in a uh, rivalry game. Kent State part of the record-setting season this year. They beat Akron for the third straight time, for the first time since the 50s. Kent State's going to go to a bowl for the first time since 1972, since the Tangerine Bowl. That famous Don James team. Mac Lambert, Gary Pinkle, Nick Saban. So even if the BCS dream is dying for Kent State, still huge goals on the line. And still a chance because he got Dre Archer. The big play threat finally gets one for Kent State. What a catch. And it's not like he was all that open. He just runs by Ward and the safety who comes over. They had him double, but watch his ball. Watch where he is. He gets a couple of steps. Perfectly thrown pass by Keith. And a great over-the-shoulder grab. Prior to this possession, Dre Archer had only 30 yards of offense in the game. That goes for 60. Kent State needs to get in the end zone. And fast. Keith, flag down, pass is incomplete. Victor Jacques knocks it away. Offside. Defense, number 95. Five yard penalty. Repeat. First down. TCU and Oklahoma get together tomorrow at noon. Oklahoma needs a win against TCU to keep the BCS hopes alive. Then Florida State, Georgia Tech in the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game. Florida State wins. Amazing to think that Florida State would be ACC champs for the first time in seven years. Mm -hmm. This is 2005 wow. for Florida State. In the Virginia Tech years. Mm -hmm. Archer in the slot at the top on first and five. Incomplete, intended for Archer. Uh, that was a misread. The, pl the place where he needed to go was to Chris Humphrey on the left side where Humphrey had single coverage, man-to-man -man coverage, press man, no help deep. That was the place to go and try and make a play. Now, Keith, Keith has got to survey this and make the right decision now. They've got to get into the end zone in a hurry. And if they will give you a man-to-man -man matchup, you have to take it. Archer's out of the game on second down. Keith's going to keep it on second and five. First down to the 10. Jimmy Ward on the stop. Four trips to the red zone for Kent State tonight, only one touchdown. Yeah, and, and you just can't, you can't get by that way. You can't win that way. You have to get touchdowns when you're inside the 20. First and goal, Archer is up at the top. But Keith keeps it to the five, second and goal. Jamal Bass makes a stop. Jordan Lynch has done his part for the Northern Illinois Huskies, hoping that the defense can stop Kent State again. Last time inside 
the Northern Illinois 20. Kent State went for it on fourth down and was stopped. Keith tucks it again. Scrambles with a touchdown. The BCS bubble hasn't been busted yet for Kent State. Let's check for his knee. Was the knee down before he got into the end zone? Knees down, ball looks like it's breaking the plane there. Very close. Yeah, I think that'd be hard to overturn that. I think that's probably the right call. The replay booth is going to take a look. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. The play is under further review. So James Robinson, our replay official, is going to take a look to see if he sees a clear picture of knee down before the football is breaking the plane. Yeah, we, we looked for the knee. It's the left knee. And where is the ball when the left knee touches down? I think that's a touchdown. I mean, that knee is down, but the ball is breaking the plane from my perspective. I don't think you can overturn that. There's nothing that is clearly showing that he's not in the end zone. See that official right there? He was right down the line looking at it. Had a perfect view. Lost his mouthpiece in the process. Mm -hmm. So ruling on the field is touchdown, and this one's pretty clear. Did the knee get down before he broke the plane? I, I, we I, haven't seen a clear picture no, showing I, that it did. Well, to me, I, I could confirm that call. Looks to me like the... That ball broke the plane before the knee goes down. Look there. Ball down, ball across the plane, knee down. But James Robinson is our replay official tonight. It is his call. He will confer with the referee, Don Willard. That's the replay official's call. And here it is. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Well, they didn't confirm it. They just said they couldn't find anything to overturn it. I, I thought it broke the plane. So 4.53 and a PAT away from a 7.1 touchdown game. Kent State goes 96 yards on that drive. They nearly doubled their total offensive production for the game with the one 96-yard drive, the longest touchdown drive of the season for Kent State. Eight plays, 96 yards, and the BCS dream is alive for the Golden Flash. Holiday celebration outside uh, Merchant Row, the Hudson Cafe, a recommended breakfast spot downtown Detroit. You do find those yes. good little breakfast places. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, appreciate the pops on that. I do my best. <laughs> That's what's on the line. The MAC Championship Trophy, the Marathon MAC Championship, part of Dr Pepper Championship Week. Kent State hasn't won it in 40 years. Northern Illinois won it last year for the first time in 28 years. Now trying to go back to back. This is the Huskies third straight trip to the MAC championship game. Ready Cortez kickoff. Sebastiano from the goal line. Angelo Sebastiano to the 28. We check with Chris Cotter. Gentlemen, Rod Gilmore isn't the only one whose alma mater is in action tonight. Syracuse leading Arkansas 57-44 over on ESPN. That's part of the SEC Big East Challenge. And James Sutherland has eight three-pointers in that game for the Orange. That's just one shy of a school record. Stanford and UCLA, they've gone to the half in the Pac-12 football championship right now. 17-14, Stanford with a three-point lead. And immediately following that Syracuse-Arkansas game over on ESPN, Dwight Howard. And the L.A. Lakers take on the Denver Nuggets. Lakers still trying to get to 500, just one game below, guys. When James Sutherland gets hot, watch out. 
fumble picked up by Kent State. Touchdown, Zach Hitchens into the end zone. The golden flashes get a huge break and are now a BAT away from tying the MAC championship. Just the break Kent State needed. Well, how do you figure that when you've got Jordan Lynch handling the football? He's handled it well all night long. And then they have this happen on his own replay. PAT is good, and we are tied at 27. 14 straight for Kent State. Back-to-back -back touchdowns in a hurry. We're going to fight into the night, Detroit. Yeah, watch the bad exchange here. It's a zone read. They have a miscommunication. Daniels doesn't take it, and it just falls to the ground. If you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan, maybe a Clemson Tiger fan, Texas Longhorn fan, hoping that a MAC team doesn't get the BCS, you're a little nervous. You don't like this. Zone read play. They've done that about a couple thousand times in practice and games, and they mishandle it here with a chance to salt the game away. It becomes a fumble recovery and touchdown for Zach Hitchens, and just like that, a 14-point lead is gone. In 15 seconds. Wow. We told you, the MAC championship games have a history of wild finishes and big comebacks. Kent State down two touchdowns, needing a win to keep the BCS busting possibility alive. They're at 17 in the BCS now, need a win over Northern Illinois, and perhaps some help to get to 16. Well, that dream is alive now for the Golden Flashes. Well, now this is about Jordan Lynch, you know. That turnover is on Lynch and Daniels, but Lynch is your guy. I mean, he is your premier player, and you got 438 left now, and he wants to overcome that mistake. Daniels on the sweep. Hangs on to it, picks up nine, but boy, you can see Sidney Salter trying to go for the strip as yeah. well. Well, Northern Illinois, two possessions ago, went on a time-consuming drive and resulted in zero points. Lynch complete. Wide open, Akeem Daniels out of the backfield, takes it all the way inside the 25. Yeah, they got him on a wheel route. They ran off the coverage with a deep route by the wide receiver and then brought Daniels out of the backfield into it. You see the receivers at the bottom running off the coverage and out comes Daniels from the from the backfield. He's out there just a wheel route taking advantage of it. Vacated area. 43 yards on the wheel. Lynch to Daniels. Blitz coming. Daniels bounces away. Inside the 10. How about Daniels making the plays on this drive? You know, we put we put half of that fumble on him, mm -hmm. and he's more than, than twice of what they needed offensively on this drive. Nine rushing plays of 10 plus in the game for Northern Illinois. First and goal, Huskies. If you're Kent State defensively, you can't sit back and be soft. You have to go force the issue. Lynch on first and goal. Cuts it back into the end zone. Huskies back on top. Just four plays, 75 yards. 
Northern Illinois regains the lead in the back and forth fourth quarter. Matthew Sims for the PAT. Seven point game again, Northern Illinois. How about Jordan Lynch? You talk about running skills. Talk about vision. This play is designed to go to the right. See him feel that, and he finds it back to the inside. That is tailback vision, and they're up by seven. All through this Dr. Pepper championship week and into the bowl season, ESPN College Football available anytime, anywhere on your computer or mobile device. Watch ESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. From Detroit, Ford Field, the Marathon MAC Championship. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, and Detroit's own Jamel Hill. Three touchdowns in the last minute, 41. That might blow up your watch app on your iPad. You can drain <laughs> all your batteries with action like that. Man, didn't take long. How about Lynch and Daniels combining for 171 yards on the ground in the second half? <laughs> Picked up again by Boyle. Again, uh, Northern Illinois kicking away from Three Archer. So don't blink because you uh, might have missed something in the last minute 41. Quick touchdowns from Kent State. Yeah, it happened quickly. Keith getting into the end zone. And then how about the fumble and kick it up and turn it in by Zach Hitchens. And then just four plays later, Northern Illinois gets it back and Lynch goes into the end zone. Four plays, 75 yards on that quick strike drive for the Huskies to take the lead. They have time, and they have timeouts. What they haven't had is a lot of consistency on offense. Keith, quick draw, pumps, finds the slant. It is incomplete, says the umpire. Incomplete. It looked to me on first glance like Hurdle caught the ball, had a couple steps, and then fumbled. Well, it didn't look like he actually controlled that from that angle. I, I think that's a good call on the field by the refs. Rogers Redding is with us in the booth tonight. He says no control, yeah. incomplete. Yeah, he never really secured that ball. Rogers Redding, the national coordinator and officials. With us in the booth tonight. Spencer Keith incomplete. Third and ten for Kent State. We'll check with Jamel. Carter and Rod, as you might imagine, it was a tale of two different emotions here on the Kent State uh, sideline. After that fumble recovery for a, a touchdown, the sideline went absolutely bananas. But I think that last score by Jordan Lynch seems to have taken something out of them. Linebackers coach Marcus Freeman told his defense, hey, guys, we just need one more stop. Not entirely sure if that's true, but certainly they have suffered uh, a lot of different emotions tonight. Up and down, especially in the last couple of minutes. Now Kent State facing third and ten. Complete first down. That's huge. Matt Hurdle makes the sliding grab. You know, if they hadn't come up with that one, it's game over. But he gets down low. The hands are underneath the ball. The ball does not touch the ground. That's a nice throw and a nice catch by Hurdle, and they, they're still alive here. Not only the BCS on the line, but Kent State trying to be a conference champion for the first time in 40 years. Slant incomplete. Hurdle and Keith work together there. Yeah. Well, they're looking in another direction because of all the attention that Archer is getting on the opposite side. Remember we talked earlier? about the need for Keith to find the man coverage with a single receiver out there against maybe zone coverage by one guy. That's what he's doing now. And that's why they're not trying to go to Archer because Archer is getting a lot of attention. Three Archer who is a fifth in the nation in all-purpose yards a game. Nearly 200. Just has the one big catch tonight. 60 on one catch and that's about it. Pressure coming from the Huskies. Inside give to Trayon Durham. 
The sophomore big back from Cincinnati fights his way to the 40. You see why he was a thousand yard rusher. He was the, the power in the running attack this season. There's a timeout. Prior to a big third down coming for Kent State, the Golden Flash has taken timeout. Yeah, well, you can use your timeouts when you need them, and you need one now because you've got a big third down. Make sure you have the right play and that you're prepared to do this. You, you may not get the same kind of shot on fourth down. I mean, right now is your best shot at it. I think that's a good, smart timeout. And you got to figure out, make sure everybody's on the same page because Archer has been largely taken out, so you got to go somewhere else. We've established early on with Northern Illinois, especially the very slow start, that maybe the pressure of this game feeling by the Huskies. What's the pressure like now for Kent State and Northern Illinois in really rarefied era? MAC championship game with potential BCS implications and two minutes to go. I think anytime there's a break in, in the action, you know, there's a chance you think about those things. And getting them back out there focused on what they need to do is huge. But they understand what's at stake right now. There's no question about it. Third and three for the Golden Flashes. Keith completes. Chris Humphrey makes the grab on the slant to move the chains to 11. Clock stops temporarily as the chains are moved. And he wasn't open. I mean, that's good coverage. It's a great throw right where only his guy, Humphrey, could get it. Yellow notches under the school names. Those are the timeouts. So two left for Kent State, three for Northern Illinois. Keep pressure. Steps up in the pocket, but leaves it incomplete for Hurdle. Sean Evans in coverage. Yeah, he's fortunate that was underthrown because Evans was all over it. Had that ball been thrown on time, on target, Evans was picking it off. A back and forth fourth quarter. Kent State scored twice in 15 seconds. Northern Illinois came back with a touchdown to take the lead. Now the Golden Flash is trying to get in the end zone to tie it. Less than two to go. I still think there is a place for the screen for them. I mean, this pass rush, this situation, there is a place for a screen pass that can get them something big. Keith, quick hitter, complete. Another slant. Josh Boyle makes the grab. First and 10 from the 22. I do like the fact that Keith has gotten the message and he's looking away from Archer because Archer's not there. Archer is getting a crowd, so the slants are working against a single, single cover guy. A minute 40 to go in a one touchdown game. A conference championship and the potential to bust the BCS on the line. Draw for maybe three for Keith. And now the pressure mounts. I mean, you have to be perfect with your execution here. A perfect scenario for Daryl Hazel and Kent State is you get in the end zone and you don't give Northern Illinois yep. any time. Keith on second and seven. Throws complete, but minimal gain. In fact, it'll be a loss. Evans comes up to tackle a hurdle. So timeout Kent State to stop it at 52. A seven-point advantage in the Marathon MAC Championship. Number 21, Northern Illinois, leading by a touchdown against 17th-ranked Kent State. Well, they wanted to stay out of the third and long, but that's where they are. And remember, the guy who's been a thorn in their side has been Ken Bishop inside because they paid so much attention to the defensive end bringing pressure. It's been Bishop, 93 inside, who's really hurt them in passing situations. There he is right there. They got to block him. 
Timeout, Northern Illinois. Dave Dorn takes the timeout. 52 seconds left. Northern Illinois, first year under Dave Dorn, won the MAC championship last year when they came from behind to beat Ohio. It's been a come from behind effort for both sides in this game. Yeah. You know, this was a, a 10 nothing start for Kent State. And then Northern Illinois rattled off 17 straight. Had the golden flashes shut down before two touchdowns in 15 seconds. And now we're down to the wire. Now, in a big year for the Mac. Now, how gutsy are you if you're Kent State? Because if you can get protection, you can take a shot at the end zone because you know they're going to be overplaying you for the first down. Out of the Northern Illinois timeout, third and seven for the Golden Flashes. Keith scrambles, throws to the end zone, caught, touchdown, Kent State. The potential BCS Busters are a PAT away from tying the MAC championship with 44 seconds. And Spencer Keith bought time with his feet and they took the shot at the end zone and got it. The first touchdown of the season for the former walk-on, Tim Urjavec. The PAT is good and we're tied at 34. 44 seconds left. And that was a huge third down. They anticipated the defense really overplaying. The third down, the first down marker, Richard. I'm sorry, Spencer Keith finding time, and then Urjak. Urjak being good, being being available at the end zone, showing himself right there between two guys. Spencer Keith celebrates. They may be getting nervous in places oh. like Norman, Oklahoma, because yeah, yeah. if Kent State is number 17 now. And get to 16 and take that BCS spot. Takes it away from one of the big powers in college football. And adds $8 million to the coffers of the MAC. For Kent State, a football program who hasn't been to a bowl game since 1972. They brought oranges with them to Ford Field. Hoping that a Kent State win propels the Golden Flashes into the Orange Bowl and into the BCS. Well, if you're Northern Illinois, you have a couple timeouts. So you have time, and you have a field goal kicker who's comfortable trying something slightly beyond 50 yards. Freddy Cortez kicks it deep. Huskies will have it at the 25. So for Matthew Sims, the junior place kicker for Northern Illinois, he's hit a 54-yarder versus Western Michigan. Last year in the MAC championship, he had a game-winning 33-yarder. The junior could have a chance for the second straight year to win the MAC title for Northern Illinois. So you need about 35, 37 yards in about 44 seconds. And Northern Illinois get it to the 38. The Kent State 38 to give Matthew Sims a shot. You have two timeouts, so you can use any portion of the field you like. You want to save the one timeout to get your field goal kicking team on the field, but you have that other one you can use so that you can work the middle of the field if you like. Take the fly sweep. Lynch sacked. And now Northern Illinois will have to use one of those timeouts. Rolling under 30. No timeout. Rolling to 25. And they're going to substitute. 20 seconds. 
And now the Huskies may just take it to overtime. Yeah, they're going to let it go. I mean, once you had the sack, it, it just didn't make a lot of sense. You were going to be in a tough situation. How fun on a Friday night with two ranked teams in the MAC championship <laughs> and the potential for a BCS buster. We are headed to overtime between Northern Illinois and Kent State. All of college football will be watching overtime in Detroit. All right, gentlemen, this is overtime. Okay, each team will get one timeout per period, and they will not carry over. There will be no game clock. However, there will be a play clock. Okay. If you win the toss, you have the option of going on offense first, defense first, or you may select the end of the field in which you would like to play. The loser of that toss then has the other option. We will then, the loser of that toss then has the first option should we get to a second overtime, and we will alternate in any subsequent overtime periods. Starting with the third overtime period, must go for two to score any points, okay? Northern Illinois, you are the visitors. Please give me your call. Heads. Call us heads. Call heads. It is heads. Northern Illinois has won the toss and elected to go on defense. Here's how we got to overtime in the MAC championship game. A wild fourth quarter. Crazy. Crazy fourth quarter. First you had the quarterback scramble with Keith getting into the end zone. And then, oh boy, the fumble on the next possession with Zach Hitchens getting into the end zone before Northern Illinois comes right back with Jordan Lynch to get into the end zone. And then the touchdown that sent us to overtime. Spencer Keith finds Tim Urgevac for his first touchdown. And into overtime we go. Think of it like a baseball inning, which is why Northern Illinois, who wins the toss, they want to go on defense first. So when they get the ball, they know what's ahead of them. If you uh, make it to a third overtime, you must go for a two-point conversion. So we will start at the 25. And when you go to overtime, 25 at 17 yards from that 25 and from here you'd have a 42 yard field goal so moving forward makes everything a little bit more manageable but starts from the 25 we track red zone from the 20 and in Kent State two touchdowns and five red zone opportunities tonight the Huskies have been better in the red zone Carter Blackburn Rod Gilmore Jamel Hill a Mac championship and the potential for a BCS buster on the line. Trayon Durham for four. This is the first overtime in a MAC championship. What a great year for this conference. A lot of high profile wins. You get to the championship week, and it's two top 25 teams. The potential for a BCS, and now it's into overtime. Mm -hmm. Durham just came off the field. He's been really effective lost a shoe he's been the guy that they've been able to use in the rushing attack what little bit they've had of it tonight and now you're thinking more in terms of Archer and some of the other guys who have stepped up on the slant routes in the fourth quarter Golden Flash is slow getting out of the hole Keith gets it off that's Archer nothing doing boy Northern Illinois has done a great job of containing the junior Dre Archer. Well, you know, everyone's yelling out when he's in the backfield. You know, one's in the backfield, one's in the backfield. And all their other keys. So wherever he goes, he's getting a lot of attention. He was the focal point of the defensive game plan, and it's worked. And now you need other guys to make plays, just as they had them do at the last drive in regulation. Slant routes. Archer lined up in the slot at the top. Third and seven. Keith comes back the other way. It's Urzevec again. How about the former walk-on who had all of 15 catches? What kind that of spot is short. Yeah. Well, remember, it's the football, not not the foot. Where's the ball when he goes out of out of bounds here? Well, that looks like he was beyond the marker. Sure does. That's reviewable, and it will be reviewed. Yeah. Plays under further review.
So again, review to see whether Urjavec, a guy, former walk-on for Kent State, who had all 15 catches coming in this game with zero touchdowns. He had the touchdown grab to send it to OT, makes that catch, and as you pointed out, Rod, I mean, the ball yeah, well, needs to be past the first down block. Yeah, his foot's beyond the first down marker, our marker, and the actual marker. Look at that right foot. That right foot's beyond it. Ball's in the left hand, but looks like clearly that ball goes beyond the marker as well. So the call on the field was Urjavec was short of the first down marker. It would be fourth down in inches for Kent State. If it's reversed, it'll be first and ten for the Golden Flashes from right around the 15th. Here's the call. After further review, the runner went out of bounds with a score progress at the 14-yard line, thereby reaching the line to gain. It is a first down. Good job. They got it right. First and 10, Kent State. And they have Durham back on the field now. The big 250-pound back has been really effective with first down running in the late third quarter, fourth quarter for this team. Durham takes it on first down. Inside the five. Bass makes a stop right at the five. It's a lot harder to tackle a 250 pound back in the fourth quarter than it is in the first quarter. You're beat up, and he just keeps coming. Second and one from the five. Yeah. Timeout, Northern Illinois. championship in overtime the SEC championship will determine who joins Notre Dame in the BCS title game game day is there in Atlanta 9 a.m. on ESPNU 10 a.m. on ESPN Kent State alone Nick Saban talking about SEC championship and potentially beyond and Johnny football finally talking this week <laughs> Scott Van Pelt Second down and one for Kent State. And that is a very big man in the backfield. Jordan Lynch and the Husky offense will get the football. The question is, what must they do at the bottom of the first overtime? Durham. Dropped. Third down coming. Sean Progar, the fifth year senior. Gets the tackle for loss on Trayon Durham. Not crazy about having him go laterally. Yeah, he's a big guy. Let him go downhill and pick up the first down. It's third down and one with a whole lot on the line. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to run him, you know, let, let the big dog eat. the 17. Wow. Spencer Keith gets back on top of the football on the busted reverse. Kind of outsmarting ourselves here a little bit, you know? I mean, you got a 250-pound back. You just ran him laterally. Line him up and let him go downhill and pick up the yard. Instead, you do this, and you have three different guys handle the ball. Wow. You're lucky that you got the ball back and can kick a field goal now. Freddie Cortez on for the 33-yard field goal. <laughs> 33-yarder is good. Northern Illinois wins with a touchdown. 
Third down and one. The reverse results in a fumble. Kent State gets three out of it. Did but I, it's the Huskies into the end zone, and they take the MAC championship. Did I miss something, or, or was there a big 250-pound back that was gutting them and in Rod, the fourth quarter and in the overtime? And you said on second down, running laterally, that was question mark, and then to run the reverse on third down. Well, Durham hoping for another chance. So now Northern Illinois football in the bottom of the first overtime. Jordan Lynch and the Huskies. Though if they get in the end zone, they take the MAC championship for the second straight year. And of course, Jordan Lynch running on first down. Minimal gain. Sidney Salter drops him after two. And you would expect to see more of Jordan Lynch. Now, they can spread you out and try and eliminate some of the guys that are in the box so that you get five blockers against five defenders and let Jordan Lynch run it. Or they can power up on you. And right now they have a back in the backfield. Daniels, nothing there. Third down coming. Roosevelt Knicks, the first team all back defensive tackle leads the way. That's Urjavec who fumbled, but it's also Urjavec who had the touchdown grab to send it to OT. Well, here's your third down play. And what has worked for them most of the second half has been Jordan Lynch with an empty backfield and the choice to throw it or run, to create. He chooses to throw it, and it is incomplete. Fourth down now. That was intended for Martel Moore and Matthew Sims, the junior who had the game winner in last year's MAC championship, but he also missed a 28-yarder in the last game for Northern Illinois in the snow versus Eastern Michigan. If he misses this kick, Kent State is in real good position for a possible BCF. Matthew Sims from 40 yards. He got it. On to the second overtime. We'll do it again, and this time Northern Illinois will start on offense with the football. And that BCS dream still alive for the Golden Flashes and maybe the Huskies. In a terrific year for the MAC. Notable wins from all around the conferences. Really good years from teams like Toledo and Ball State. Marathon MAC championship game pits two ranked teams. Potential BCS. Spot on the line between Northern Illinois and Kent State, and we're going to our second overtime. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, our Friday night crew. Northern Illinois will get the football first, meaning advantage Kent State in the second overtime. Both teams get field goals in the first overtime. We've also switched ends of the field. So again, Muskies get the football first. Old flashes will know what they need when they get the football back. Coach is trying to keep everybody loose. You don't need players pressing right now. Akeem Daniels on first down inside the five for Northern Illinois. That is the fly sweep we've seen a number of times tonight at a head start, a running start for Daniels coming around, getting to the edge. First and goal, Huskies. We're not going to see any trickeration down here, are we? I would be surprised. And if I'm a Northern Illinois Husky fan, I know I want the football in the hands of number six, Jordan Lynch. Yep. Lynch dives 
for the touchdown. Huskies on top in the second overtime. Third rushing touchdown of the night for the junior from Chicago, Jordan Lynch. Great patience. Great patience on that run. Matthew Sims for the PAT. Seven point lead for Northern Illinois. Kent State will need to get in the end zone to tie it in the bottom of the second overtime. Well, it started with the fly sweep. Akeem Daniels getting to the edge in a hurry, almost gets it into the end zone. But then Jordan Lynch finishes it off. Watch the patience. He's waiting, buying his time, looking for the spot, and then diving into the end zone. Makes his coach pretty happy. Fourth touchdown of the night for Jordan Lynch. Three on the ground, one through the air. After a slow start, the Heisman candidate, potentially, Jordan Lynch. Four touchdowns. Kent State football. Darryl Hazel's golden flashes need a touchdown to keep the BCS dream alive. Play fake. Incomplete. Off the hands of Urgevac. Yeah, Urgevac dropped that one. He had it right there. And again, this offense has been limited because Dree Archer has been essentially eliminated by this defense. And so other guys like Herjavec have been asked to step up and make plays. But number one has not had many opportunities here. Archer's in the backfield now next to Spencer Keith. Dree Archer. Just a couple, it's third and eight. The ball Jefferson stops Archer that time. Northern Illinois could be two plays away from a second straight MAC championship. Yeah, well, this is Spencer Keith, at quarterback. He's, he's got to get the ball out. Remember, the pressure has been coming inside from Ken Bishop, number 93, because they've overplayed the defensive end, so concerned about them that Bishop has been a problem on the inside. Kick pumps, throws, flag down. It's going to go against Rashawn Melvin, tangled up with Chris Humphrey. Yep, had his hand in the cookie jar. He was having contact out there when the ball was in the air. Pass interference. Defense, number 11. The ball he placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. So that's a penalty against Melvin. Moves it up to the 11. Fresh set of downs. Durham takes it. Balls forward for maybe three. Jamal Bass on the tackle. Let's go back to the pass interference. Bottom of the screen, there you see the Chuck and then the hold on right there, that, that right hand grabbing on to Chris Humphrey. Good call by the official out there. No question about that one. Second down from the nine. Kent State needs a touchdown. Bottom of the second overtime. There's a 17 next to Kent State's name. If they get to 16, they're going to the BCS. Keith nearly picked. It would have sealed it for Northern Illinois. Victor Jacques got his hands on it. It's third down. 
for Kent State again. Yeah, Durham was the guy he needed. He was out in the flat, one-on-one, -on -one, a big back who could have broken tackle and got to the end zone. You see him slip out to the left side of the screen there, but there was no one open in the middle of the field. No one. Jock Hankins onto that football. Huskies win. Third and eight. First down markers at the one. Keith. Incomplete. Intended for a hurdle. Evans in coverage. Fourth down and eight. It will come down to one play. The MAC championship and the opportunity for Kent State to be a BCS buster. Searching for the right play. I think they had the right play called the last two times. I just think they went in the wrong direction. The right play to go, right place to go, would have been to Trayon Durham, the big back coming out of the backfield, in the flat. On one of those plays, give him the ball, give him the chance on second or third down, to make a guy miss with a full head of steam around the five yard line, I would bet on him to get in the end zone. Now, now you've got a tougher road to go here. The slant isn't working. They're overplaying inside. You don't have Archer. You got by with getting your tight end last time, Urjavec, into the end zone. Can you buy time with your quarterback now? Can Keith buy some time so someone can come free? In the second overtime, Spencer Keith hasn't completed a pass. Fourth down and eight. A MAC championship, a potential at the BCS, and a major payday for Kent State and the MAC. It comes down to this. Keith rolling, throwing. Intercepted. And the Kent State BCS dream comes to an end. The Northern Illinois Huskies win their second straight MAC championship. Final BCS ranking. Desperation throw, trying to get it to Archer. Not there. In double overtime, Northern Illinois beats Kent State 44 37. Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, I'm Carter Blackburn. Stay tuned. Sports Center is coming up next. Northern Illinois plus the BCS dream of Kent State tonight.